Morning, Raptor Freaks. Lexi Otts here. It is Saturday, and we're reacting to a great overtime win over the Boston Celtics last night. The, the Raptors finishing up their preseason 3-2 and two with a great victory over Boston. Very enjoyable game last night. So much fun. So many good things happening in it. Uh, a lot of good evidence and good events happening that will shush some people about what they're worried about with our team, with our starting lineup, and different things like that. You know, it's interesting that Gary and Pascal didn't start yesterday. And a lot of people are worried about our starting lineup, want to switch things around and stuff like that. There's been a lot of talk like that this week. Well, we see a different kind of look like last night and we see, wow, this seemed like this is a lot easier. It kind of does give some evidence that maybe we should like uh, really think about how we do our starting lineup and make it very fluid. Because, it, you know, that starting five is great. And maybe they do switch it really quick, like two or three minutes in like that. But it was very interesting to see a lineup of Fred, OG, Scotty, uh, Precious, and Cam to start the game last night with who they had. That was really cool combination in some ways. I really thought Cam did a good job coming in at the start of the game, just as a Montreal representative and also just to establish certain things down low. And then, uh, you know, Precious in the starting lineup, he was something else last night. He had the most minutes in the game at 37 and uh, really, really proud of Precious and the way he played last night. Very aggressive, very going to the basket and attacking. And so was Scotty. And so was OG. Those three guys were bullies last night. And I really love seeing the bully ball from all those different guys in different ways. OG, amazing to start this game. In the first half, OG Ananobi, fantastic, amazing. Yes, so good. All right, let's see what you guys are saying. I know the first thing we're going to talk about. Now, I want to say, first of all, uh, this is the decision that Nick Nurse and the coaching staff made to, to take Justin Champagne and make him the 15th man this season. I support it even though I don't totally agree with it. And uh, it is what it is. And, uh, you know, we can say people were right. Yeah, logical Raptors fanatic was right in saying that he thought that Justin would make the team. So I will give you credit for that. But you're one of many, many, many people. <laughs> you're not the only person that was saying this. In fact, I want to give Allison, who was on Confederacy of Dunks, big props for saying it also and her hoping that he would make it because I know she emotionally was tied to it, that she really, really wanted him to make it. So I'm happy for Allison that uh, Justin made the team for her and stuff like that. So it's not that, you know, it's, you know, we all had varied opinions on it. And I, I was looking at it from a certain standpoint with needs and stuff like that. And I don't necessarily agree with this decision still guys, but at some point yesterday, uh, DJ Wilson fell out of consideration to be on the team. I'm not sure exactly why, but that was decided before the game even started because he did not even play. So he was out of it uh, before the game even started. And you could tell, seeing his face in the game at different times and stuff like that, he knew that he wasn't going to make the team. Now, just because Justin was playing so much in the game early did not necessarily mean to me that he was going to make it for sure, but it did mean that in the end. Now, I was thinking, well, they just didn't see him a whole lot in preseason. They're going to overplay him in this last game of the preseason, partly because of that. And I think that was part of things with that, is that they needed to get him more time and things like that. He looked okay. I was happy with a lot of things that he did. Uh, you know, he did have two air balls when he shot both his threes, and he did blow a couple of defensive assignments, where they, which led to easy baskets for the other team. But late in the game, in the second half, he played really, really good dogged defense on some of the smaller guards on the other side like Pritchard and Grant Williams and different people like that. And that was what I really, really liked about what Justin Champagne did last night, is that he played really good guard defense. And that is something that maybe if you look at our roster, that we need that a little bit more. So, okay, this makes sense for that. Plus, obviously, he's a better fit because of culture, because he's such a good friendship with Delano and Scotty. And uh, he has more time in our system, just like you guys have been saying, that he's got more time invested in him, in our system, in different ways and stuff like that. It's worked out in a nice way because, you know, he's there and he's good for, uh, you know, these guys that, that you know, like Delano and just Scotty. So it, I just don't want him to fuck anything up with this team with chemistry because of his shenanigans outside the court. That is my biggest problem with Justin, y'all is that I see what he does around the team as being a possible thing that lights up a dumpster fire. 
And I don't want that. So I'm happy for you, Justin, that you're on the team. You overcame things like not being able to play all summer and being injured and you still made the team. I'm very happy about that. In some ways, that was an underdog kind of thing to do. But I'm warning you, you fuck up this team's chemistry with your bullshit around the the interviews and different things like that. I'm going to be pissed at you. So I'm going to watch out for that. But you go ahead and have a good year. And uh, I hope that you continue to grow as a Raptor and do very well and do good things for our team. But don't fuck up our chemistry with some stupid ass ego shit is what I'm going to say, Justin. Yeah. All right. There we go. All right. Tom Duke is saying winning, winning. That's right. That's what it's all about in Montreal. And that the fans brought it right last night. The, it was electric, sold out and just good, good energy supporting the team. There was a good percentage of Boston fans in the building also last night. And, I, you know, that I was expecting that it's not that far to cross the border. And also, historically, a lot of people in Montreal may be Boston fans just because they're kind of close to the Celtics uh, geographically and stuff like that. And, you know, they could have been basketball fans before the Raptors even existed. And they were Celtics fans in like the eighties and the sixties, even the seventies. So, you know, I expected some Celtics fans to be there, but they really did bring that good Raptors energy in there. And then one thing I have to say about having basketball games in buildings that don't normally host basketball at all in Canada is very dangerous. This is a hockey building. This is where the Canadians play. This is a hockey building that's not used to having hardwood on it. And the problem is that the people that take care of the ice get a president. They are the person that's most important because there's no other sports normally being played in there. So they really crank that cold up and keep that water there. So if it heats up because the basketball, the court gets wet. And that is part of the reason why we saw people slipping and sliding all over the place. And that is very, very dangerous. I don't like necessarily the Canada series for this purpose. This reason is that game in Edmonton, the game in Montreal last night could have been very dangerous for the players because the people that control the building that take care of the ice and the floor conversions are not as savvy to switch it to basketball and make it completely safe. And that we've seen at times in recent years, Places that double as hockey rinks are dangerous for basketball players to play on. And that was definitely the case last night. Matt Marcus Smart got hurt because of that on the floor with the wetness. We saw people slipping and sliding in a couple of different places. And that is very dangerous. So NBA, if you're going to go to other arenas, the, the people in those arenas that take care of the ice, they need to fix it and make it safer. We have a way of doing it here in Toronto where this is not a problem with our conversions. They need to be able to do that, too, because they would be really awful if there was some sort of bad injury for somebody we care about. I'm not talking about Marcus Smart uh, because of the floor wetness and stuff like that. This is something that I always worry about when we go to places that don't normally host basketball. That is a hockey arena. That This is very common. This happens. All right. Logicals here. Freak freak time soon. I have to say you were right, Mike. And yes, I should have listened to you to a degree, but this is what it is. It's a spirited debate. And, you know, somebody's not always going to be right. And somebody's not. Right. I'm going to admit that I was not the one who was correct about the 15th position on our roster this year. As disappointed as I am in some ways, I am happy that we know who our team is. And that in some ways, Justin being the last guy added is kind of feels good because it, it fits with what Scotty wants. It fits with what Delano wants. And if they're happy, I'm happy too. <laughs> it's kind of like that for me and stuff like that. But yes, G, Logical did call that Justin would make the team. And, you know, he's saying here that, you know, he knew that it was going to happen because uh, the money situation and the way the money went down after the Coloco deal went down, it really was signs were pointing towards Justin was going to be retained and logical could see through the lines and stuff like that. So I would give you credit for uh, looking at the co contracts and the money situation and deducing that Justin would be the one that would kept very astute stuff. Logical Raptors fanatic and check out logical Ra Raptors fanatics channel. Always good content. It's supposed to have a two part series coming out soon uh, this weekend, hopefully and stuff like that. Yeah. So it really was since the uh, Coloco signing that logical saw it. And then he said, you can tell from the extension series and the rotations video on who was going to be on the team, but I didn't want to drive that option hard 
ultimately it wouldn't have mattered in time. T minus 10 minutes. Yeah, listen, I appreciate you coming to this channel regularly and stuff like that. And I have to admit, you were right when we made this argument over the last week or so that Justin's uh, you know, time accrued with the team was more valuable and just different things about the culture and being a teammate with the other guys and stuff like that. That was part of the factors because it's really weird how they said it about DJ. They say he just wasn't under consideration anymore further. And that was before the game. He would have played in the game if he was still being considered. So he had been X'd out and out of the picture already before they even took to the court in Montreal and stuff like that. Uh, Isaac Campbell said, Scotty's defensive IQ was on full display. You know, Scotty just moved so much better uh, last night. He had a great day yesterday. He had a bunch of different great things happen. His new Google Pixel commercial came out yesterday, and it's fantastic. I love it. It really is a love letter to our city and the country of Canada, seeing that he this is his new home. Have you guys seen this Google Pixel commercial with Scotty Barnes in it yet? It is amazing. In fact, they managed to get Cheese Magic in the video, in the commercial. It's an awesome store in Kensington Market. <laughs> All my friends at Cheese Magic, go to Cheese Magic, where the cheese is magic. Seriously. You go there, you bite it. Mm, it's like magic. It tastes so good. So Cheese Magic in Kensington Market is in the commercial <laughs> for Scotty Barnes uh, on Google, Google Pixel. And he's talking about when he first came here, he didn't know what to expect, but he was embraced. And now this is his home and stuff like he means this. Y'all, this is not pandering. This is not a weird thing that he made, was forced to say this, the gun to his head. He wanted to say this stuff because this is the same stuff he's been saying on Twitch all summer. That, you know, people ask him all summer, it's like, where are you, Scotty? Are you in Florida? Are you in Canada? He said, I'm in Toronto. I'm home. He said he was home all summer. And that was at Toronto. Here, baby. Here in town with his dog, Cardi. This is home for Scotty is what he said. And he means it. This is real. Like, he is taking to us. This He wants to be a Raptor. He may end up being like Fred, where he says, I want to be a Raptor for life. And he's already saying stuff like Toronto is his home. And he means it. This is what he said all summer. Trust me. We know from the Twitch crew that he's been saying that all summer long. Uh, cool Cat's here. Good morning, Raptor Freak crew. Good morning, Cool Cat. Good to see you. Uh, salute to you, Logical Raptor Streak. I really do appreciate you. Uh, Tom Duke is saying, uh, okay, it jumped way ahead. This is interesting. Oh, wow. You guys are filling it up today. Just like we filled it up in the net last night. I love it. Um, uh, uh, Tom Duke saying morning freaks. Woohoo. Let's go. Good morning, Tom Duke. Good to see you, my friend. Uh, G said, I said it before on here that Pascal and OG are a bit awkward together. They clog the paint on each other. However, once Pascal nails his threes, it will open the floor. I love both. It really was cool to see OG once again, kind of picking up from the little bits of growth that he showed last year before he would get hurt. And like that New York game last year, uh, different times where he had like 30 points and stuff. He did. He would look like that same guy again last night. Very overpowering, very slow and kind of deliberate with his moves, but very effective. In fact, that first basket he made when he kind of came around the swing and he kind of just strode to, to the basket and laid in. I was like, man, he's, he seems like he's going slow, but nobody's getting in his way. And then being four for four from three early on in the game, OG was just fantastic. I mean, he looked like a real number one superstar for a team. 13 for 21 from the field, four or five in the end of the game, but he was four for four at the half. Uh, six rebounds, two blocks, 32 points. He was a plus one. OG was fantastic last night. In fact, he's my first star for the game last night. Number one star for the night, OG Ananobi, because he really did take control of being, he was the best player on the court. If you had to look at a battle between OG, uh, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, OG was the best player between the three of them in the game last night. And that is awesome to see that we lose Pascal, but there's OG to pop up with a new Hydra head and take care of being the man for us. And they really didn't realize they had to do that. And they stood up and took it, Scotty and OG. You know, no Gary, no Pascal, no problem. We just got other people that will come and carry the water. And this is something we got to realize this season. Nick said it again in a couple of interviews this, this, this week that uh, different people are going to rise up and have huge games on different nights. This was very much the case last year, guys. We remember this. 
you know, Pascal wasn't always the end all be all leading scorer each night, night in, night out. Some nights Gary was, some nights Fred was, some nights OG was, some nights Scotty will be. So we got to remember this when we're looking at stats after the game, like we were, we're doing now is that it's a collective. It's not just an individual night by night performance that some guys are going to be having a bad night. But if we have guys that are like stepping up and carrying the water, making sure we fill up that bucket to get to the right line so we win, that's what all that matters. We just need that next man up mentality when guys are out and when guys are not able to produce in the game, that somebody else will step up and make something happen for the team. And now our energy and all kinds of different things was way better and very different than other games in this preseason. There were a couple of things that we did that were very, very effective. In fact, we were quite stifling to the Celtics in different ways last night that we haven't ever been in the past. And that really is partly because of Christian Coloco. In fact, last night he showed another whole level of kind of like dominance and different things that he can do out there that is going to be very scary for the rest of the league. In fact, if I was a Celtics fan and I watched the game last night, I would be like, oh, shit, the Raptors have this Coloco guy now. And this isn't good for us that the, the, the Raptors have Coloco. What? They're already so annoying. Why do they have to have a seven foot one guy that can block shots and be all over the place like that now? This isn't fair. If I was a Celtic fan, I would be starting to think this. Like, oh, my gosh. It's so crazy. And the way this game went down with Jason Tatum getting tossed in the third quarter, the the the, the rookie coach for their side, Missoula, get not knowing how to handle that situation and getting a tech himself. You know, the, I'm telling you, him being a rookie coach is going to hurt Boston all year. They're not going to get the same kind of respect. They're going to have weird shit happen because like that's listen, that's a golden boy. That's somebody that on the unwritten rules of the NBA, they're not supposed to get fouled out because people pay money to come see them like LeBron. So it's very interesting that Giamitas threw out Jason Tatum in the third quarter. Normally they would not do that kind of stuff. Now, maybe because it is preseason and this game doesn't count. And they're like maybe trying to show in good faith that they do do this kind of stuff, that a superstar just can't be an asshole on the court and talk shit the whole game and not get thrown out like Draymond last year in some games. Yeah, Draymond should have been thrown out of some games, but they let him keep talking. Well, Jason Tatum just waved off Giamitas just like this, and he had already gotten a technical. Well, he was thrown out at that point, and everybody was shocked in that moment. Everybody was kind of like, what? You're going to throw Jason Tatum out now? It was confusing like because it doesn't seem like that's something the NBA would do marketing-wise that they would throw out Jason Tatum out of the game. Well, they did, and I was like, yeah, you go, Giamitas. You know, like well, he's standing his ground and he's saying, yeah, no, he's out, y'all. He got a technical earlier and he just waved off me off. Like if I'm going to give a technical to one of the Raptors for making an arm motion towards me, because that's what they're doing now. It's like when Gary Trent tapped his arm like this at Tony Brothers last year. Well, there's more of that now. You cannot make any kind of motion at the referee like psh, like that. You do that. That's a tech. You do like anything like like that. That's a tech. So if you do any kind of hand motion towards the ref, you're going to get a tech. And that's what they enforced there. In fact, they were kind of showing, the NBA refs were kind of showing, this is how it is this year, y'all. Are you going to jump up off the bench and come on to the court? Well, it's a tech right there. And people are going to say, oh, it's the no fun league, like the NFL with their celebration uh, penalties. Well, this is, yeah, a little bit like that. And I don't totally agree with it. But I do in the case of them not coming on the court. And you can see after they called that tech on the bench, they didn't come on the court anymore. They kind of like Pascal at one point saw where the line was. And he was like, uh, I don't step any further. And even Scotty grabbed another teammate at one point when they were celebrating and held him from coming on the court. In fact, I think it was DJ Wilson that jumped on the court and got the technical for us last night. Not the best way to go out, DJ. It sucks. But, yeah, the rules were shown last night that they're going to enforce this stuff this way this year. That was a message, that Jason Tatum ejection and the technical for how we celebrated at that point, too. So very, very interesting stuff. Now, G, what you're saying about Pascal and OG playing together, I can kind of understand what you're saying. 
because I mean, in some ways they kind of need a lot of room to do their spins and moves and stuff like that. I don't know. I think they played a lot together. And I think that we've just been kind of going through like trying to work things out and that there have been times when OG and Pascal play together and they're absolutely fantastic in concert together and stuff like that. But then maybe you may be right. I don't know. But I think you're right. If Pascal hits threes and he kind of hangs out outside a little bit more, it'll help things in some ways. A salute, Killer uh, uh, kill Cat and Tom Duke official. Yes, I like that. Nako the Nacho saying, I think there's a strong argument starting Precious over Gary. OG became him last night. Yeah, OG did become him in a way last night. He definitely was the man. For our team and the the leading guy and stuff like that. There's really, really good stuff there. Ah, the precious over Gary thing. I don't know. I think it still is look and stuff. Ah, why not have these guys all have status of being pseudo starters? Like if there's seven of our guys that kind of are pseudo starters, precious can feel good. But I don't want to take anything from Gary also. Uh, Tom saying OG and Scotty Barnes can get it done. Salute, logical. Well done on sticking to Justin Champagne. Yeah. Yeah, OG and Scotty are a great combination. In fact, Scotty showed some of that stuff I've been talking about, that bully ball stuff, where he can just take a smaller Celtic to the lane and just put the ball in over him. We saw more of what he's going to do offensively as he matures as an NBA player and understands just how much he can throw his weight around in NBA games because he really, really can. And we were a bully team. Like our points in the paint last night was almost 70 points. And that's important because we had to counterbalance the threes barrage from them. They couldn't miss threes in the first half. They shot like 10 for 19 their first 19 Three pointers. They were shooting over 50% at the three point line in the first half. And that was a real problem, but we were still kind of keeping up with them. They did get like double digit leads from time to time, but we were still in there battling, plugging away, and playing our brand of just physical defect deflections, defense, rebounding like crazy. Like, in fact, we out rebounded the hell out of them. We had 22 offensive rebounds last night. And we made them pay for those ones. Some of them we didn't convert, which was crazy. Early on, we weren't able to convert offensive rebounds, even though we were getting them like crazy. And we weren't hitting our threes again. We weren't really taking a lot of threes either. It's a really bizarre way for the Raptors to overcome a team like the Celtics that were shooting so well it, the way that we did it. It's really overpowering and kind of overmuscling them is what we did. Like We just were very strong. And then, of course, Boston had to play their starters a lot last night. In fact, our depth showed also in helping us win, much like the first win against them uh, the, the last week, is that our depth was a real strength that carried us real far also against them, besides the bully ball and being big and strong. But, man, they bullied them. Like, all three of them were bullying them. Precious, OG, Scotty. Those guys were bullying the Celtics. They say, oh, I've got a, a Derek White. On my back, I said, oh, that's a little baby. I'm going to give him some baby food. Let me feed him. This is what Scotty's probably thinking. Oh, Derek White, he's a little baby on my back. Yeah, I'm just going to back him down, put the ball in over him. He's a little baby on my back. Oh, little baby, let me feed you, put you to bed. You know, that's the way he talks about it on his stream. He said, oh, I'm going to give you baby baby food. Get the little baby on my back. <laughs> oh, Scotty's so awesome. I can imagine him thinking that, oh, I've got a baby on my back in the middle of the game. He's like backing down Marcus Smart. He's like, oh, little baby. <laughs> it's so awesome. Uh, all right, let's see. Um, uh, Tom Duke saying, OG and, uh, okay, yeah, we already heard that. Um, Cowboy saying, let's go. go. Let's go, Bradley. Good game last night. So much fun to watch. Entertaining, high scoring. Montreal got their money's worth. All kinds of great highlights and dunks and just fun stuff. They got the little sampler platter like you would get at a restaurant of appetizers, of little things from that you enjoy about the NBA. And they got it all. They got overtime. They got drama. They got a, an ejection. <laughs> they got all kinds of interesting like uh, plays off of people. Some really beautiful Scotty Barnes stuff, Coloco stuff, OG stuff. Yeah, just a really great fun game like if i was at that game last night i'd feel like i got my money's worth to see like 130 to 130 game against boston and the raptors oh so good good morning monique super fan monique so happy such a glorious day for monique and everybody <laughs> 
Uh, Tom Duke saying, just glad we know our squad and know the freaks will support it. That's right. No matter what, even if I disagree with their decision, it's their decision. They know the best. I trust in Nick Nurse. And I trust in Justin Champagne to really give his best effort, get out there and get in the fight and be a dog out there. There were his good attributes on display last night. And I appreciate that. That like his hustle, his offensive boarding was there. He had a little nice little finger roll. And like I said, I really value the way he guards small guards on defense. That that is something that we may need. Like another little kind of pest guard like Malachi does and stuff like that, or Fred. We need that kind of level of guard to balance things, I guess, and stuff like that. And also I started thinking, like, you know, Wancho really does kind of cancel out DJ in some ways because they're kind of similar player in some different ways. And it may be they're kind of too similar that like we have Wancho. We don't really need DJ in some ways as part of probably the thinking also. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jackson gets my sympathy for his efforts. Yeah, it is what it is. He was just in a tough spot no matter what. He he was going to be in a tough spot no matter what. Now, I don't know what the fate is for him uh, as far as things. He could turn around and get signed to 905 and be around us still, but I don't think that's likely. It may be very much so that he just wants to stay free agent and possibly still get picked up by somebody, or it could be that he's heading overseas. Like right now, he may be going heading overseas. He gave it his shot, and that's all he got. Uh, Logical saying, it was decided when contracts were worked out. The options of Masai and the Raptors told volumes the signals were there. Yeah. Yeah, There. I mean, I understand he had a higher partial guarantee uh, and different things like that and stuff like that. I, you know, there's different things that could have changed it. You know, I don't know. If he had not came back and played in these last two preseason games, I don't know if that may have been a factor and things and stuff like that. It's really good that he came back and he showed something last night. He didn't really show anything in the game before, but he did last night. I have to give him credit. I mean, let's look at his line just real quick. Uh, he had 25 minutes, two or five from the field. He did air ball both the threes, three or four at the free throw line, three offensive rebounds for six rebounds, two blocks, seven points. He was the highest plus minus on our team last night. He was a plus nine. So I got to give him credit. He was a part of the winning in some ways, you know, in a lot of intangible ways. It may not all show up on the stat sheet. Champagne was a part of the winning last night for sure. Uh, let's see. Uh, G saying Celtics really played their starters into the fourth. There's a huge drop off in talent from their starters to the bench. And I get hate for saying that they, they need to stay healthy. We learned that the hard way. They learned that the hard way. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, they did really play their guys a lot last night. And it's crazy that Tatum got tossed and Smart got hurt. That's not good. They don't need Marcus Smart to be getting hurt like that at this point. Of course, we've seen Marcus Smart bend in really weird, creepy ways and just bounce back and be completely fine. Like he's not totally human in some ways because of the way he can bend his legs and stuff like that. And he doesn't even get injured. So I may be, I would be surprised if he's not even injured from anything that happened last night. That he's just like, oh, I just fell awkward and hurt my, uh, you know, calf and, or like my thigh for a second. But then he wakes up today and he's like absolutely fine. He's like weird like that. I've seen him bend his leg like all the way, like 90 degrees. And then he's like fine, like five minutes later. It's really weird. But, yeah, I think you're right. Like, a lot of people are saying that the Celtics are one of the deepest teams in the league. I don't fucking buy that. Not after seeing what we did, the two games we played them in the preseason, as far as they were exploring their depth. You know, like the Hauser and Prichard combo last night was not effective. We absolutely shut them down and made them look like ordinary players and not like these three-point specialists that in the first game that we saw them. Hauser was one for eight, one of seven at the three-point line. We found him way, way better than in the first preseason game. And then Prichard was 0 for 5. He missed all four of his threes. So the starters were hitting their threes in the first half, but their bench was definitely not hitting their threes in the second half. And that was really a big part of us coming back and overcoming them by the end of the game. But yeah, really, really cool stuff. And I love seeing our depth very effective and good. Jeff Doughton, once again, looking consistent and just really nice, making some huge clutch baskets late in just a couple different moments there and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, the, I would be a little worried if I was the Celtics fans uh, as far as like y'all's depth is not exactly like our depth. This is very different 
Uh, Nako saying DJ is more consistent, but Justin has better upside. I think you're right on that. The DJ, it may be more polished pro at this point, but there is a ceiling or, or a, some sort of potential in Justin that can still be d- discovered and stuff like that. I think there's a lot of different factors involved in this. Well, once again, I'm not going to be a total hater, but I am going to warn him. I don't want him to fuck up our team in any kind of weird way just because he thinks it's fun to play games. I'm not about those games. We're professionals. We we carry ourselves like professionals as a team. And that means not, you know, taking people shine when they get their interviews and stuff like that. So I do not want to see him interrupt any more interviews this season. If he does it, he's going to do it. I'm not going to like it. And I will talk shit about it (laughs) because it's like it's not right. Like if Jeff Doughton is the star of the game and he gets the interview and they're talking to him, I do not want to see him come anywhere near him. (laughs) If he does, I'm going to be pissed and stuff like that, you know. Um, And plus, I don't I don't think it was a good look that Justin was bullying DJ during this whole process also on Instagram. He'd take pictures of him and like write captions and like make fun of him and stuff. That's not a good look. I don't like that kind of shit. Now, Justin has said, I'm going to be me and I'm just going to be me. And that's who I am. And so if I can't be anybody else other than who I am is what he said on Instagram. And I can respect that, but just try and maybe cut out like the, the bullying and stuff like that. As we said on this channel, you don't have a lot of weight to throw around on this team to just act like, Oh, you can sun people and stuff like that. On my my pecking order, you're very much down near the bottom with Ron Harper Jr. In fact, I think Jeff Doughton Jr. is above you on the pecking order as far as things, the way I look at it. So, yeah, have some perspective and respect for your teammates, and let's not sun them during live interviews this this year. I know some people are fans of that, but I'm not. I'm old school. That is fucking uh, rude. And it has no place in the in the league, I, even if people think it's funny and stuff like that. It's kind of like this guy who jumps in on the camera when the lady reporters and says something vulgar and stuff like that. That's the same kind of behavior and stuff like that. Uh, all right, let's keep going. Um, uh, cool Cat is saying congrats to Justin. Happy for him. I was scared that DJ Wilson would take the spot. The investment in Justin is going to pay off. I hope so. I really do. Like oh, over time, I hope that he kind of um, – you know, gets better and better. Really want him to be more consistent with hitting his threes. That'll be the biggest way he can help us because obviously we need more better threes. So Justin, make your threes and I'll like you even more and more as time goes on. Uh, G saying, I hope they can keep Gabe and Josh on the 905. Yeah, well, Gabe will be there for sure, uh, but I don't know about Josh Jackson. He's at a crossroads in his career in basketball. He has to figure out whether he wants to, you know, do the 905 route at this point in his uh, young career or because he's already kind of had to do 905 at different times, I'm sure. So stuff like that. Nameless is here. Good morning, Nameless. Uh, DJ, I feel so bad for him. G saying, yeah, I do and I don't. I mean, listen, other teams have given up on him and stuff like that. It may be that the Raptors were like, well, which one of the guys will come back and bite us in the ass the worst if we cut them? Well, Justin might. So maybe they're like, we're scared. We don't want to cut Justin because we know he might get pissed at us and take it out on us later. Well, will DJ do that? No, he won't. We're not worried about him doing it to us later. That, that may have been part of the thinking, too. It's like, I don't think DJ Wilson may be in the league this year after this. And that's too bad. It really is kind of sad kind of thing where it's like, oh, this may be your career and stuff like that. It's so many years in and this is where you're at now. Uh, Evelyn saying, yeah, I agree to uh, you 100%, Tom Duke. I enjoy watching our team. Let's go Raptors. Let's go e- Granny Evelyn. We love you, Granny Evelyn. Oh, a true Raptor freak. Good morning, Raptor freaks. Can't Cowboys saying it again. Uh, Tom Duke saying, Nameless is hilarious. Just saying, cheers, Evelyn, and hope you are doing great. Bam, Nameless. Uh, yes, a lot of agreement here, a lot of ups and uh, good stuff going on there. Uh, Logical saying, and no doubt, I'm still a nobody, but I understand what we're – doing picture wise justin has that big brother edge and pride and will never give up uh sunning people is athlete stuff bro yeah but it has no place in in interviews do it in in practices do it in the the locker room do it in you know fun stuff like when you're on the plane and shit like that don't do it on fucking live tv when there's a young person like ron harper jr who may not get very many interviews like that in his career and it's on national TV on ESPN. It's just a really bad look. And for a person like me, it really makes me hate the guy. Like I hate people like that, that are arrogant and just kind of jump in 
and kind of take people's shine when they deserve it. It's very much like Jimmy Kimmel at the Emmys when he laid down on the floor and ruined that woman's speech just because he felt like being a clown. That's why I don't like it. You can go ahead and sign people, but just don't do it on live TV is what I'm going to say right now. Uh, G GMA is saying there was definitely a lot of Quebec Boston fans. At times they got really loud when uh, uh, Boston scored. Were you at the game, GMA? Cool. I'd love to hear more about uh, actually being in the atmosphere of the game and stuff like that. Uh, cool Cat saying Celtics really risked keeping their starters in late with our third bench players. Yeah, that's what some people were saying. Why is Marcus Smart even out there to be allowed to get hurt like he did when he did his little splits and stuff like that? He may have been – they should have pulled him out of the game already by then and stuff like that. Nameless is saying, I'm so confused about DJ. You know what I think it is? And this is what I'll say, and I feel bad for him. I think that he may not just have that killer instinct in him, that he – you know, he was a good talent – Good size, a lot of good skills and stuff like that. But maybe it's just like he's missing stuff that Justin really has, which is a real like desire, real like, oh, go get it kind of stuff. He's fundamentally good and stuff like that. But maybe he's missing an edge is what I'm saying. And that may have been part of the factoring in and stuff like that, that it, maybe he doesn't. I don't know. I don't want to put any labels on him or anything like that. But I think that's part of it is that he's maybe too mild mannered in a couple of different ways. And that may have hurt things. Uh, Tom Duke saying, uh, is Boston sports in the house? I doubt it. Yeah. I wonder where Boston sports has been after these two preseason games where we beat Boston in overtime, both times. What fantastic stuff. It's so cool to get extra time to beat Boston some more. <laughs> yes. And I love that, you know, Celtics fans stayed up a little extra late to just to see their team lose anyway and stuff like that. Salute, Mo and Nameless from Logical Raptors Fanatic. Uh, morning. Uh, Tom Duke saying, yeah, Lex, those guys were brutal at cleaning the court. Grant Williams had to do it. <laughs> there was just a lot of condensation. I'm telling you, in these buildings where they don't have to switch the basketball very often, they don't, don't know how to make a safe basketball court. That There will always be condensation kind of bubbling up just from the heat of the players running on top of the ice. And if there's not enough protective a uh, 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 barrier in between, well, it'll get the court wet. And that's very dangerous. They had to call a 905 game last year because of this issue that the court was just too wet. They couldn't play at that time and they had to get it like dried off. Yeah, it was funny to see Grant Williams do that. I thought that was kind of cool to see him out there doing that. It's like an interesting image uh, to see a Celtic like washing the floor and stuff like that. And Marcus Smart was laughing at him. Stuff like that. It's pretty funny. Uh, logical saying nameless. Just as misunderstood by fans. Not going to lie. I hope to do more to close the gap. I think I thought I put the reasons out there enough, but I'm going hard. You know, listen, I love the stuff he does on the court. I just give a shit about what he does on the court. I don't give a fuck about his little fun son game. It's so dumb. Honestly, I hate it. In fact, I think that partly he could that's how he could cause problems on our team because he's going to piss somebody off by thinking he's funny. And, and then they would be like, you know what? This isn't that funny at this point, you know, and even Ron got him back. And I love that Ron did that. Like, do you think Justin is should be allowed to son Christian Coloco? I don't think he should be allowed to son Christian Coloco, even though he's a rookie underneath him. Christian Coloco is a much better player than Justin Champagne. And if we're going by that, it's just ridiculous to me. And in some ways, I really do take what Justin does as bullying. And I'm anti-bullying. I don't like bullying. He did literally take pictures of Jeff Doughton and uh, um, um, uh, who else? It was uh, DJ Wilson, obviously, and put them on his Instagram, making fun of them at times this summer. I just don't agree with that. You know, you should be classier than that, Justin. You just fucking cut out all the extra shit. Work hard, play well, and I'll like you more. Because there's just a lot of extraneous shit and stuff like that. This isn't baller life. This isn't culture for basketball. This is fucking idiot shit. It's not like, oh, this is just culture in today's basketball. Fuck that shit. Because there's some problems with today's basketball with kids throwing basketballs off each other's faces from doing stupid shit like this. It's just not necessary. I will argue this till my blue in the face about the sunning stuff. It's so dumb. It could, I don't mind if it's off camera or if it's in candid little moments, if it happens on open gym and it's just caught in the moment, that's fine. But if it's national television and somebody's getting a post game interview, no, don't ever do it. Then 
That is the worst fucking time for you to do it because you just look like a clown. You do. You really look like a clown when you do it. Stuff like that. All right, let's see. Nameless is saying just sub up. Subbed up, sub them up, sub them up. That's right, sub up logical for sure. Uh, let's see. Oh, wow, there's a lot here. I like to see Cream Thomas is here and Top of Top and uh, some of the other names and stuff like that. Um, all right, wow, I'm gonna have to get going. You guys have really written in a lot. I will make sure I read every comment and stuff like that. All right, uh, Monique saying the league ain't ready. I think you might be right. There's a lot of things showing about us. That if we improve our offensive efficiency and we keep the defensive stuff that we're doing, that already kind of wins games. Like it's like we don't even have to be good offensively and we can win games because we're just such a physical presence. And with our length and just the different things we do, we don't have to be completely perfect on offense. So if we get better and better on offense, that just means it's going to be even harder to beat us. And stuff like that. Uh, cool Cat saying Justin got a scare, so he will continue to work hard. He's always wanted to be a Raptors player, and he has the same agent as Pascal. So, so happy for him. This is good. I'm glad he got scared. In fact, I hope this kind of humbles him because seriously, he needed to be humbled, and he was he got humbled in the last month. And I'm I appreciate that about the process with him. This will make him a more mature adult player in the league, and not such a kid acting like a kid and doing kid stuff. So yeah, I appreciate that he got humbled and hopefully this will show in this, this year coming up with him on our team and stuff like that. I just don't want the extra shit because I understand how this can cause problems for a team. We don't want bullshit like what's happening with Russell Westbrook on the Lakers. We don't want problems between players just because of some stupid frivolous shit that somebody thinks is funny and stuff like that. Uh, all right. Respect, respect. Uh, G saying, I had a feeling when he posted himself on IG in a Raps uniform with a heart. Yeah, they probably were kind of uh, letting people know a little bit of how they're leaning and st stuff like that and things like that. This is good. It's good in some ways. Uh, cool Cat saying, DJ Wilson not needed due to Wancho and Coloco. Yeah, I think that's very true. In fact, Wancho looked fantastic last night, even in just a little bit of time that he had out there. He ended up uh, going one for three. He did hit that nice three in that one, one play. He's only 15 minutes. But you know what, guys? He got seven rebounds last night. He was a plus six. So he's definitely a part of that time when we busted the game open and we started winning was when Wancho was out there. And uh, he is he's going to be a capable three-point shooter for us. I really have a lot of confidence in him. If he's open, he's going to make that three more often than not. So I, I don't feel like he's going to be anything like a Svee this year. He's going to be dependable. I can tell. I can already tell. It's just there's something about him and the way he is as a professional that he has confidence. And that's the thing. Svee didn't have confidence last year. Juancho has confidence. And he's going to be fine. I think he's going to be very, very capable for us uh, hitting his threes. A uh, thing that was a big uh, rap on uh, Svee Mahalik last year. It's not going to be the same this year for Juancho. Uh, let's see. Cat's uh, coming with the facts. Uh, Nacho is uh, saying if Scotty is pandering, he's a hell of a good actor. Yeah, he's not pandering. That's a very authentic commercial, that Google Pixel commercial. He means what he's saying. And he really has taken to this city in a lot of different ways. Scotty Barnes is very much going towards being more Canadian for sure. Good morning, gang from uh, Glamma D from the Twitch family. Good to see you, Glamma D. Uh, uh, Cowboy saying that dunk by Precious was fire. There were a few dunks last night that were absolutely crazy. Like Coloco's dunk in transition was badass. Just look at how much ground he can cover in like two strides. It's crazy. I thought he almost traveled on that play, but they were like, let him go. He took like a step. And it took him two steps from the free throw line and just like, wow, crazy dunk. And it was really nasty. And I love it. Christian's going to be so good, guys. Like they already are kind of like, this guy got drafted in the second round. How the fuck did that happen? How did he get drafted in the second round? He should have been drafted in the first round. Christian Coloco, that's for sure. But yeah, precious, ferocious Achua at the game again last night. Just attacking the rim like he does. And like, oh, my gosh. When he gets up there and he's just ugh, so nasty. I love that stuff so much. Because it's like Boston fans sees that and they're like, oh, my gosh. We're in trouble. We're in trouble. Uh, Monique saying, uh, congratulations, Chris Boucher, on launching his foundation. Yes. So happy for him. But sad that he had to do it by Zoom. But really happy to see all the players show up and support it and stuff like that. What a great cause. He's going to do stuff to help inner city kids in Montreal 
uh, have helped to get uh, the, on their feet. That's something that he probably wished he could have had when he was at a certain age as a kid on the street in Montreal at a certain point in his life. So it's so crazy and awesome that he's literally giving back to something that was something where he personally came from and has experienced and knows himself. And that is fantastic, making a difference in the world. Chris Boucher, you are awesome. We love you. Uh, Tom Duke saying, OG and Scotty is a great one-two bully punch. They really are like a punch-punch. So it's like you can have OG come down and take a brunt of like being a bully ball and then have Scotty alternate like every other, you know, whatever. Scotty really was pushing his weight towards the basket last night in a different kind of way than last season. That is this very, very directed and very intentional and very much him showing off. This is stuff that I'm going to be going towards more in my career as I get better and better as a player in the NBA. As I get more comfortable, as I really get reps and really understand. And I love that he's got all kinds of different moves. There's no like signature move. In fact, at one point last night, he did a little baby hook like Kareem would do. And he kept the defender off of him with by using his off, uh, his off shoulder from his shooting arm. You saw that one when he kind of went down the side of the lane and he just kind of he kept the defender off him, made the shot open by just throwing it over, over his head like a, a hook. And that is a really, really good sign of stuff to come, that he can get space between his defender by using his broad shoulders and throwing it up over like this. If he does more of that, him and Coloco can do those all day because he's got enough strength to push a guy off and get room. And nobody's going to block that little hook uh, on the side there. Now, Coloco is a whole other different thing as far as the height uh, that he can have a release point to put the ball into the basket. Nobody's going to be get up there and trying to block him or stop him. So he gets really good with little one-handed hooks, little spin hooks around in the paint. Coloco's going to be unstoppable. Like they're not going to be able to stop him from making it if he gets really good with his touch. And he has good touch for a big man already. So we know he has it. He's going to take reps and shooting more and more and more. And then Coloco is going to have unstoppable little hooks. And Scotty, too. We, we saw Scotty do it last night. It's really cool. Bully Ball Barnes, Mr. 94 Feet with the Bully Ball. Yes, I love it. Uh, Nameless saying we desperately missed that version of OG for three years now, and it showed. You know, OG is on his own development path, his own development schedule, and he's shown such great brilliance every year he's played for us. It's just been different ways and different measures, maybe more on the defensive end being a lock, maybe more in this way. Oh, all of a sudden he's hitting threes now. You know, he's grown as a player so much and that we saw the indications that he could be this dude last year. Well, he showed it even more powerfully last night than even the ones that he did last year. There's another level that he's grown into uh, as evidenced by what he did last night. Really awesome. Really love seeing it. And like I said, I like seeing that he was the best player in the first half of the game last night over Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. He was the best out of those three guys. And that's fantastic. I mean, what he, he had like 25 points at the half or something like that. That is really, really good. Uh, all right, let's see. Uh, Scotty loves being in Canada. It's his first time being a star. He was coming off the bench in college and he didn't get spotlight around Cade in the U.S. Yeah, I wonder about this. I think he's all, always kind of had kind of a star quality, but he is weird about his fame. We know this from being on his Twitch. that He doesn't totally understand that people in Switzerland knew, know who he is at this point. That people in the world care about him and love him. And like, like you know, this tour where they went to Edmonton and they went to Montreal, they see uh, the consistent energy from the Canadians coming to cheer them. It's kind of like they're like the Beatles, seriously. Like the Raptors show up in Victoria for their training camp week and people are screaming at, at the outside of the bus. It's very much Beatlesque kind of stuff. These guys go from town to town and people are like, hey, wow, you know, they're going crazy in Montreal. They're going crazy in Edmonton. So it's like they're like the Beatles of the NBA in some ways in Canada. You know, uh, down south, maybe they get that kind of treatment a little bit just when they come to different NBA cities and stuff like that from Raptor fans down there and stuff like that. But they really do have a, a buzz about them that is kind of like, you know, the original dream team had this kind of buzz around them when, you know, there's energy, there's a lot of excitement. Maybe fans are kind of like, "Ooh, where are they? They want to see and stuff like that. the Raptors are becoming like that as a team. 
And, you know, this was preseason last night. And they're getting that Beatles kind of feeling around them wherever they travel. It's really interesting and fun. I love it. Uh, but, yeah, Scotty is definitely, like, becoming more and more of a star in the NBA. He's going to be, especially after performances like last night. People are going to open their eyes, and they're going to say, wow, this kid is really special. And the NBA is going to start marketing him more similarly to people like Zion Williamson and Jason Tatum and things like that. They'll put him on blast once they see that they can make a lot of money off of him. Uh, top of top saying, good morning, everyone. I echo the sentiment that Pascal and Scotty occupy the same offensive space on the floor. When Pascal was out first 10 games of last year, Scotty and OG flourished. Well, OG did for sure. It was still too early for Scotty, and he was kind of, uh, you know, Scotty was very consistent the whole season. It didn't matter who was out there. Now, the whole thing that you guys are saying, G's echoed this also already in the stream. I can see that with OG and, Pre and Pascal, but I can't see it with Scotty because I think Scotty fits with everybody in every kind of way, and there's no stepping on toes with this. But what you guys are saying about OG and Pascal, I can definitely see that. And it may be the kind of thing is like, well, Pascal's the one who has more experience. He's been in the league longer. He has kind of been our de facto number one. But we know that OG could be that de facto number one in his absence. And that's a luxury in some ways. Like OG doesn't need to be the number one guy every night. In fact, we may want him to concentrate and exert more energy on the defensive end than trying to score so much like he did last night in certain cases. But that's a luxury we have. It's like, okay, well, Pascal's back. OG, you go ahead and just really shut down Jason Tatum and Pascal will carry the scoring load. Now, if he's not making it, we need to step up and start scoring in his absence if he's not able to make the shots and stuff like that. So it's a luxury. And I don't really think this is a problem because they've been able to coexist for a few years and it's OK. OG just takes a back seat. And Pascal's allowed to operate because he is more tried and true tested uh, option number one for us. But it's nice to see we have other guys that are ready to jump in and be the number one option if somebody's not available. That is such a good strength in some ways and stuff like that. So uh, let's see. Cowboy facts had to watch the replay and it was the Boston feed and Scalabrini and the other guy were talking high about Coloco before that dunk. And then when it happened, like right after they, re they reacted like, Oh <laughs> yeah. But Scalabrini was a little bit scared. They're logical. It's pretty funny to probably watch the game on the Boston feed last night. Pretty, probably would have been pretty funny to watch it on there. Uh, Nako St. Scotty, OG Coloco precious were our best players. My three stars were OG number one, Scotty number two and Coloco number three. Coloco was just, uh, you know, he didn't have like a super great uh, stat line. 17 minutes, uh, 12 points. He was a plus eight. He did foul out, guys. He had six fouls. And he even said after the game, I need to learn to not foul so much. <laughs> He's what he said in the interview last night. We called this. We knew this was going to happen. Uh, only two blocks, uh, one steal, four rebounds. But he was a perfect six for six from the field. And that's very impressive that he made all the shots. No bunnies missed. Six for six from the field, 12 points. Fantastic stuff by Coloco. I love it, G. I see that you got it right there. Uh, no, no, no. No, no, no. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Nameless is saying this version of OG could be the X factor for our season. Of course. Well, he's always been there like this. This is the thing we got to realize. It's going to be night in, night out. Different people are going to pour different amounts of water into the game to help us win. And then it won't be consistent each game. There are going to be nights where Pascal's going to have a dud. There's going to be nights where Fred has a dud. There's going to be nights when OG has a dud. But then turn around and see Precious step up or see Pascal step up at that point, a different time. You know, that's what I'm saying. We need to just temper our expectations. I said this last year. Look, think about the W. That's the only stat that needs to matter. We don't care about who's averaging what points, what rebounds, what assists. We don't care how many minutes. We don't care who shot the bet, shat the bed, who played really well. As long as we win, I don't care. It could be so ugly. The other team could make 50% of their threes, and we have to grind and win by making more two-pointers, by just getting more possessions, by steals and deflections and offensive rebounds. And it can be ugly as fuck like that, but I don't care as long as this is the ultimate result. And that's the thing. We can get real nitpicky and look at everybody's stat lines and really, really come down on them. But there's no reason if we won. Now, if we lose, I will look at it and pick it apart like an autopsy and kind of try and look and see where there were areas where we could have improved. 
But when we're winning, I'm not going to hear like nitpickiness about maybe somebody had one shitty game and everybody else played pretty good. But then we're dumping on that player just because they didn't show up in that one game. I'm not doing that this year and stuff like that. You guys know that from last year. That's just the way we run on this this channel. Is so we don't bash if we won. Why are we going to get on anybody on the team? Because you know we won the game. That's awesome. You know somebody's not going to play well every game. It's just how it is. Um, <clears throat> all right, let's see. Tom Duke is looking. He's looking at Tom Duke. Shane Waters is here. Good morning, Shane Waters. Uh, OG was nice from mid range. Uh, bench has the chemistry already, even with missing pieces. Solid effort last night. Go Raptors. Yeah, we haven't even seen Otto Porter do anything yet with us yet. That's going to be another interesting addition as we go along and stuff like that. There's a lot of interesting, really fun things about this team. I want us to get Cleveland on Wednesday and kick the shit out of them right away. Yeah, let's beat them. And uh, Cowboy's very happy about Coloco as he's on his fantasy team. And Coloco is looking really sharp. He's going to get you some stats and stuff like that. He's going to get to play, too. Like, he's really looking like he's, you know, he's just something totally different than what we've had on our team for years now, really. I don't even think we've had anybody like him since, like, maybe Keon Clark. Like, he really is a different level kind of defender as far as a shot blocker. And he makes everybody think twice anywhere near the basket. So Boston really was stifled by him when he was out on the court. So I really love the way he plays. And he's going to get minutes because, first of all, he has the motor and he doesn't get tired. He can run up and down the court, which is different than most big men. A young big man usually can't play a super amount of minutes because they of their conditioning and getting tired and not being able to keep up the pace. Well, Coloco can do that. So that and the fact that Nick Nurse said he has a high IQ last night in the interview after the game, those kind of things are going to get him time and he's going to be a regular contributor in our rotation. This is not going to be uh, take time uh, developing him kind of thing. He's going to get going right away and we're going to get to see him grow really quickly, partly because he's going to get to play a lot because he's effective and he's also able to do a lot of things that would normally keep a big man out that they can, he, they can't do. He can do them. So this is awesome. I love the stuff that's going on with Coloco so much. He is just a godsend as far as our second round pick this summer. He's so good. He is so good. Uh, all right, let's see. Coloco. Uh, all right, let's see. Uh, cool Cat saying Fred Van Vliet did a good job moving the ball. Floor manager, seven assists. He fed Coloco a lot. Seeing Kyle Style and Fred Van Vliet was happy to see his change to let other guys shine. You know, Fred did something interesting last night a couple times that I really like. And he can do this because Coloco's there. He just kind of goes and tacks the basket and he throws the ball up and it may go in. He, you know, it's kind of some of his circus shot lay ins that he does in the land of the Giants, where he's kind of going to the basket. He's not making a totally great shot, but he just threw it up and maybe he hits the backboard and goes in. Well, knowing that Coloco's around and he can clean things up, he may just go to the basket and throw something up in the air because he knows Coloco can go get it before everybody else and put it back. In fact, there was a couple of times Fred took went to the drive to the basket. And he just kind of lofted a shot up in the air and Coloco was kind of lurking around. And I bet that's what he was intending. It's like, well, I can do this a little bit more aggressively and without a little bit of error because I have somebody who will clean it up for me that is uh, above and beyond and capable of doing this. And I really love some of the stuff he did. Like they did the pick and roll like we were asking for the Stockton Malone pick and roll between Coloco and uh, Van Vliet. And he just has to throw it up. In a certain place, and he will go get it. And Fred loves that. Like, this is a totally different kind of, like, lob threat, lob option for Freddie to play around with this season. And we are right. The chemistry is really good, and Fred is enjoying it. And Christian is all about going and getting it and throwing it down. So it's going to be really interesting to see more of them playing off each other this year. We're going to see some special stuff. Because I can tell that they actually, their skill set really locks in really nicely together. As far as Fred's aptitude in passing and getting the ball in the right place. And then just Coloco's just athletic talent at his height and his ability to get higher than everybody else. That is going to be such a deadly combination for other teams in different ways as we explore it more and more of the season. Uh, top of top saying, I think not now, but down the line, Pascal in a first pick will be our DeMar trade piece to get that elite player. 
i.e. Shea uh, Gregarious Alexander, won't be likely this year, but maybe the next one. I don't like talking about that stuff. I don't want to do a DeMar to anybody else on this team. I'd like to go with these guys, but I know this is a business and that these kind of things can happen anytime. I don't want to premeditate anything like this, especially for Pascal considering he was our Pippin in our championship run and that I'd like him to be a part of this dynasty that we're about to build here, that he needs to get multiple championships and rings to solidify his place as one of the, a really great player in the history of the NBA that, you know, that's the things Fred and Pascal sticking around and being on our team for years to come makes it better because they connect the first championship by the Raptors to any of our future ones we're about to get. So I don't like talking about Pascal moving anywhere. And I do not want to duplicate what we did to DeMar DeRozan to any of the current Raptors at any point if we can avoid it and stuff like that. Because it, it, it was tough and it was sad. It was the right move, but I hate seeing that. And I know if this happens, it will really will be for the right move. But there's a lot of things that tell me Pascal's not going anywhere. His brother's a coach on our G League team now. You know, he has a house that he bought here. He's not American. He has no ties to teams down there. He is a Raptor. He's more Canadian than he is American at this point. So I don't know. I don't think Pascal will be the one that gets traded uh, just because he is pretty ensconced in our, our culture and our foundation of our team and stuff like that. Logical sand killer cat. That's Fred Van Vliet's job that uh, Scotty needs to learn the way of Lowry. Um, yeah, Scotty will learn more and more of like how Lowry used to be, hopefully through Fred and his experience. Uh, Nameless saying Coloco was so dominant. It's scary. Kudos to our development system, because I don't think anybody could imagine this. I mean, you could see him kind of in Arizona and the way he played and stuff like that. He really was like such a force last night. And, and the, that's a great thing. It's like it's not even about scoring. It's just really about presence and just making people think twice and just being able to cover so much ground so quickly. I like him with Ken Birch because they're two totally different kinds of centers that can give us two different kinds of defensive presences that are necessary. We this He really is the rim protector we were crying out for last year in Christian. And that Kem is that physical doorstop. I will play you like a vet and shut you down that way. You saw that at the beginning of the game, how Kem messed every single one of the Boston Celtics shots around the basket up right at the start of the game. They weren't making nothing right near the basket. Everything they made was out at the three-point line. Well, that was partly because Kem was holding it down down there and making their lives miserable, trying to make any layups and stuff like that. So uh, let's see, Fred had seven assists. He did have five turnovers last night, but I'm not really worried about that. He had four steals, 13 points, four of nine, he missed all of his threes. He was five for six from the free throw line. Freddie was all right. <clears throat> He didn't play as much as the other starters, it seemed like, but he did get 30 minutes in there. But I thought Freddie was good. I, I, I'm, you know, he wasn't the best game by him, but the turnovers, but otherwise, really, really good stuff. Tom Duke saying DJ getting that tech was the last straw. It might have been, like, honestly, I don't know. I don't know. We don't know all the different factors that were figured into all this and stuff like that. It may be as simple as what Logical saying. It was the money that they had already figured out and things like that and stuff like that. And that, you know, Logic was saying that it was a real long shot for obviously for Josh Jackson to make this team. That was a long shot. I thought DJ had a better, a little bit better of a shot in some ways, but it may be very much true that in a lot of ways they really were on the outside looking in and that Justin just had a, a kind of like it not totally guaranteed, but said, you know, listen, we're looking out for you. We understand you're hurt and you can't play right now, but, you know, we, we will keep you in consideration still. And stuff like that. It really was how much he was missing activities this, this summer that made me kind of think, yeah, well, if he's not available, then why would we play him? Well, he made himself available. He got available by the end of the preseason and he showed something. So he got the spot. Good for him. This is good. This is good. It's like the guys are going to be happy about this. I know Delano and Scott are very happy about this for sure. Uh, yes. Yeah, stay off that court for sure. For sure. Uh, Tom Duke saying, so happy Prashard missed those game winners. Yeah, that was fun. It was a little bit of a, <gasps> you know, when he took one of them real near close to the end, because he did kind of have an open look, but he missed it. It was awesome. <clears throat> uh, Top of Top saying, Coloco was amazing. He made Tatum rush a three and changed many shots at the net. He also gave Fred a big man target 
when he got stuck on the drive to the net. He moves well without the ball. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, that I think Fred can feel more daring to try and go into the land of the Giants when he has the most giant giant on his side. You know, because if he throws it up there, who's going to get it first? It's going to be Coloco because his arms are just above everybody else's and stuff like that. Uh, great point by G. Seven apples for uh, Fred Van Vliet. Seven dishes and dimes. Yeah. Uh, Monique saying, Channing Fry with his negative comments toward us, as always, shaking my head. Yeah, there's a lot of people speculating who's going to be the eight teams in the playoffs for the East, and we're getting left out. I think that's hilarious. How can you all think that we're going to get left out of the playoffs this year? Y'all are crazy NBA experts that think the Raptors are not going to make the playoffs this year. Well, okay, let's see what happens. We're going to see that by the end of the year for sure. Uh, cool Cat saying, with Fred Van Vliet taking a step back, OG will get more shot opportunities. Yeah, I think so. I mean, they were definitely going through him. And, like, he was aggressive. I like that he was aggressive. And he was mixing it up. It was, wasn't just him driving the basket. There was a little bit of post up. There's a little bit slashing the basket. There was a little bit of three-pointers. You know, there was a mixed bag of different things that OG does well, all coming together and being shown in the game last night and being very super efficient. Like, the fact that he scored so much so early – is very much efficiency, like him not missing and him doing everything right in really kind of different ways. And like he showed a little bit of everything. He showed that his speed could beat somebody. He showed that his strength could beat somebody and stuff like that. I really love what I saw from OG last night. Uh, Nameless is saying, I knew he'd be great, Cowboy, but he's looking like a lottery pick. He really is. Like, Coloco should not have been drafted when we drafted him. Once again, Masai and Bobby had pulled a fast one on the NBA and gotten a gem real late. That they just are the best scouts in the league. And, that, you know, who the fuck? Why didn't somebody take Coloco before this? People are probably seeing Coloco now and they're like, wow, we could have used this guy on our team. What were we doing? We had the 20th pick. In the draft. Wow. He went in the 30th something. Oh, my gosh. It's probably how a lot of people are talking right now about Christian Coloco and what he's looking like and stuff like that. Uh, Logical saying the Boston broadcast was giving Fred Van Vliet his flowers, calling him one of the greatest undrafted players ever and mentioned Ben Wallace in the same breath. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Boston announcers, for giving some shine to Fred. Uh, somebody who should be talked about in the same breath as Ben Wallace and Moses Malone. Undrafted greats in the NBA history and stuff like that. Yeah, good stuff. I love to hear that they're giving some respect to Freddie. Uh, Canadian Cowboys saying, we're getting a ring this year. Get your finger sized. Get your sized finger so you can figure out how big that championship ring should be at the end of the year. That second Toronto Raptors NBA championship ring, 2023 champions, Toronto Raptors. I'll say it over and over again all year because the more I say it, the more it will come into reality is really how you can make your destiny is say it and put it into reality. Say it over and over again. Don't be afraid to Toronto Raptors 2023 NBA champions. Don't be afraid to say that. Say it to yourself every morning when you wake up Toronto Raptors 2023 NBA champions. The more we put it out there in the words, in the echoes and the vibrations of the world, the more likely it'll bounce into happening in real life. Because we spoke of it many, many times and stuff like that. That's what I'm saying. Sometimes you can do that in your life. You can pre-visualize. You can pre-speak. And things will happen in good ways. Uh, G saying, I saw some fans hating on Fred. Feel like he can't win with some fans. Seven assists is really good. And still, three, 13 points to boot. Well, this is the behavior I'm talking about that we don't really want to do here. I could get harping on him for five turnovers, but what's the point? We won. We were awesome. And he did do good things for us last night and stuff like that. He was a floor leader. He did a lot of good stuff. Some of these guys that are just going to carry the ball a lot are going to get turnovers. You look at the other side for them, and the Celtics have bad turnovers with their main guys. We got three turnovers by Tatum, four turnovers by Smart, six turnovers by White. Uh, you know, oh, wait, uh, four turnovers by Smart, five turnovers by Brown, no turnovers by White, sorry, uh, but four turnovers by Grant Williams. So lots of turnovers for the Celtics on the other side. We forced them and they turned into points and stuff like that. That's really good. Um, all right, let's keep going. Kareem Thomas, good morning. Good to see you, Rapid Free Kareem Thomas. Gary needs to be a starter. Not that I agree, but if we want to keep his trade value a premium, it's better he starts. Yeah, I don't want to do it just for that reason. I want to do it because he's a great player and that he is actually something that adds something to our team. So, you know, there, you know, there's we need more stuff like what Gary Trent Jr. gives to the Raptors. So it's not smart to talk about taking him out of the starting lineup 
because he really is one of our best shooters. And, you know, even though he didn't play last night, you know, he adds so much good stuff. So I, I like him starting. And also, we got to remember, this was part of the problems he had in Portland, was being jerked around between the starting lineup and not being the starting lineup. We don't want to do that to him. He doesn't deserve that. He's done so many good things for us. And it'll pay off in the long run if we stick with Gary and let Gary still be who he's supposed to be on our team and stuff like that. But I don't want to do it for trade value. I know a lot of people are saying he's probably likely a guy that we would trade if we do make a big deal this, this year, stuff like that. Uh, Monique's just praying for OG to stay healthy this season, to be honest. Yeah, I think OG will be all right. I mean, he looked really, really strong. There's people like going in and out of my door. I don't know what's going on outside. Um, all right, let's see. G saying, oh, yes, no Pascal and OG will work it out and be amazing. Good problem to have. Yeah, this is a great problem. If the, you know they're duplicitous, if we were like, what, what? They, so many different guys could do so many different things and stuff like that. Well, Pascal's a little bit more uh, seasoned with carrying the load night in, night out, being the man and stuff like that. He just has way more experience, more consistency in it. And it may be that OG steps up and he carries the load on more often nights and so, certain nights and stuff like that going forward and stuff like that. It is a great problem to have. Tom Duke and G for sure having so much talent and so many different guys that could step up in different times. This is a glut of talent in so many good different ways. So like that. logical saying OG was showing what the Maasai wants last night. Kawhi is scoring. Yeah. Him and Scotty. I mean, Scotty really, to me, looks like Kawhi on some of the plays and moves he does. He just looks so much Kawhi when he has his back to the basket and he's in the low post. That is Kawhi shit that he's doing. He'll bump him and then just go over with his giant hand and just hit the hit the basket like easy shots. And he was really, really effective around the basket last night. Scotty was hitting a lot of good stuff and finishing and stuff like that. I really like what he did. 10 for 10, 50 percent shooting. He it was two for six from the three point line. But I like that he made two of those threes and they were kind of dare, daring him to shoot the threes. And he nailed them uh, uh, two of the six. And then three for three at the free throw line. The Raptors shot really well at the free throw line last night for the first half and most of the game. And then in the fourth quarter, they shot the bed at the free throw line and ruined their percentage because they were shooting like 90 percent at the free throw line for most of the game. And then they, they had a bunch of misses late and went down to 78 percent. But I'm really proud of Precious Achua in particular who got to the line 13 times last night. That is a lot of free throws, and he made 10 out of 13. I'm He was a horrible free throw shooter last year, and Precious and Delano were the two guys I was like, these guys got to shoot better free throws. These are really important things for them to improve themselves, and they did better last night. Delano was five for five at three. He even took that technical when they're throwing everybody out. He took all the technicals. I'm like, why is Delano shooting the technicals? He's not a good free throw shooter. Well, he was last night, five for five. And Precious, 10 for 13 at the free throw line, getting to the line a lot. In fact, that showed that that ref crew was respecting Precious on his drives. They weren't calling offensive fouls on him when he'd go to the basket. They were calling fouls on the Celtics. And I love that. In fact, Precious said that this week. He said in his interview, he's like, I want to get more calls, referees. Well, maybe they were listening to you, Precious, because they actually did give you some respect and put you on the line last night. And I love that. He also said this, and this is kind of a pre uh, uh, pre uh, amp a, a, a prelude to my uh, ref report tomorrow. He said that he has relationships with certain refs in the league. He won't name the names, but there are people that he's comfortable talking to as a young third year player in the NBA and saying, Hey, how do I do this better? Or how do I change this so that you guys will call the foul so that I get to line? Or how do I do this? So I don't get called for a foul on the defensive end. And he has ref friends is basically what it seemed like with Precious. So, yeah, there's a couple of refs that are, uh, I can talk to that, that help me out and stuff like that. So it really is a relational kind of thing. And it could be that one of the refs last night is one of those guys that it, like Precious has a, 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 a conversation with. He's already cool with because they were putting him on the line a lot last night. I wish Pascal got the line as much as Precious was getting the line last night. He was really – and maybe because he was being aggressive and he was doing it the right way and stuff like that. But I really love that those two guys in particular were making their free throws last night, Delano and Precious. That's a big improvement from last year because they didn't. They, they would miss like 50% of their free throws all the time. And it was really bad last year, really, really bad. Um, all right, let's keep going. Uh, cool Cat saying, Pascal has – 
connection and rhythm with OG and Scotty. All summer, Pascal, OG, Scotty worked out. It's not an issue. You can see instances in the game where Pascal and Gary Trent Jr. were badly missing. Yeah, there were times where we could have used those guys, but that is just the, the – you know, how many guys did we have out last night? We had Boucher out. We had Pascal out. We had Gary Trent. We had Otto Porter out. We had Malachi out. There's five guys. Five of the 20 guys that we had suited up last night were not available to play. And, you know, we weathered that fine. We just played the team that was in the Eastern Conference in the finals for the Eastern Conference, the Boston Celtics. That's a big deal that we played supposedly the best team in the East two times in preseason, and we played their starters a majority of the time. That's the thing, too. They played their their important players way more in the two series, the two games that we played against them. In fact, they were playing their starters against our end of the bench last night at a certain point. It was Jeff Doughton versus uh, Marcus Smart all of a sudden. They still had their dudes out, and we were still beating them. I love that so much. That is so awesome. That is the Celtics. They were in the finals. We handled them very nicely, very, very nicely, and I love seeing it. Uh, Cream saying, I know Coloco may lack mass, but we need to find him in and out of the starting lineup depending on the matchup. Spaces the floor tremendously. Yes, yes, I'm all for this, Kareem. And you know what? It Look, it may, we may be able to cover up his lankiness with the overall size of our lineup with the six, nine vision with having so many other big dudes. Like if he's playing center and he's got cam and a uh, uh, precious next to him, that is okay. He's got beef next to him that can make up for the beef that he doesn't necessarily have, you know, Thad, you know, have all these different big dudes out there with him. They can cover up some of that stuff and he can still do all the other things he does so effectively and awesomely and stuff like that. Yeah. I agree with this. I want to see more and more of him, especially if he's super effective. He's not causing problems and he's staying on the court without foul trouble. Play Coloco as much as you can, Nick, play him, play him, discover more is what I'm saying. Uh, let's see. Uh, cool cat saying rookie Coloco is showing why he's an NCAA champion and a PAC 12 defensive player of the year. He definitely alters shots. That rim protection is awesome. I know it's not like this dude was unknown. He was at a huge school, Arizona, and he was put on blast. Everybody knew he was. He's a defensive player of the year. They could go watch his highlights. They could go see him. Why the fuck did he fall out of the first round to us in the second round? I'm going to keep talking about this. Not that I'm upset about it. In fact, I'm giddy about it. It's just it's so weird that, like, how did he not get drafted in the first round? Are people that bad at scouting players? Like, seriously, this dude, like, forget about the other guys that we talked about center-wise, Comagate and all these different people we talked about this summer and stuff like that. We're looking at all kinds of centers. We got the right one, baby. I mean, this is the right one. Like, Ishmael Comagate, I don't know what he's going to fucking do right now. Kofi Kingston, I don't know what the fuck he's going to do right now. I ain't hearing nothing about them. We got the right one. It's Christian Coloco. Yeah, we got the right center. And we were looking at all those guys and like wondering about them, stuff like that. It's amazing. It's so awesome. Uh, G saying, serious question. How did the league let us get Coloco? I know. This is what I'm asking myself. It's like G, G and I are very similar in mind. We think alike in a lot of ways. And he's like, how the fuck did they? they they're going to be saying this in years to come. They're like, how the fuck did we let the Raptors get him? Ah, yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, top of top saying, I like Jackson's ability to stack the, attack the net from the three point line. Champagne is a bit of a duplication offensive rebounder of what we already have. You know, I yeah, I agree with this, but also, you know, it is true. DJ Wilson kind of was a duplication of other things that we had on the team. And I was just thinking, oh, if we're going six nine vision, let's really go six nine vision and have DJ Wilson. Well, I think one of the things that we've seen in preseason is the Raptors have an Achilles heel when it comes to smaller guards messing us up in some ways uh, with their offense. That maybe we don't have enough capable guard defenders. And this may be really a big reason why we went towards Chimpani is that he is w really quite good at guarding small guards and people around that area uh, on uh, uh, of as far as position. And we didn't have enough capable small guard defenders. And I think that may be on the down low one of the biggest reasons why we kept Justin. And we saw in the second half last night against the starters for the Celtics that he was doing a good job running around with people like uh, Grant Williams and Derek White and Marcus Smart. 
So that's that's kind of what I think it is. I mean, the offensive rebounding is fantastic. The energy and the, the doggedness in him, the get after everything is absolutely fantastic and a prerequisite to be on our team. So he fits in that way. But I really do think it was his ability to do some defensive things to smaller players on the other team that may have been the little bit even more that put him over the top as far as like being the one we kept for uh, the season, stuff like that. So. Yeah, I think. Uh, all right, let's see. Monique saying Coloco over everything, literally over everything, because he's seven foot one. And he's just over everything. He's just over everyone, <laughs> just height wise. I mean, if they stand them all in a row and they put and say, put your hands up as high as you can, he's going to be the one who's over everyone because his wingspan and his height is just up there. It's way up there. Oh my gosh. Uh, cool, cool cat saying, I still prefer Precious and Boucher coming off the bench together. They have a synergy, and Boucher would help stop Precious from sulking when his sh shot's not going down. That bad habit needs to stop. I don't see Precious do that too much. The thing that's bugging me right now is Scotty's real chatty with the refs, and I worry about that, especially since the refs are kind of showing that they're hair trigger to give you text and do different things right now because they want to set the tone for this season. Scotty has been talking to the refs a lot the last couple games. And maybe some of it is he's trying to carve out respect with them to get and ones and get to the line. And I agree with that. That's a good thing. But we, once again, we talked about this earlier this week. We don't want the guys to get caught up in not getting calls and turning and talking the refs when they need to be getting back to their defensive assignment and stuff like that. That happened with precious and Scotty and a couple times in the last week. And uh, we don't want that to continue to happen. The sulking, as you put it, about not getting a call or something like that. I don't think Precious, Precious is way more happy-go-lucky on the court these days as far as things. I don't see him upset or very down or very, like, discouraged or anything. He seems like he's very strong and happy and very positive, just his energy. Now, Scotty, at times, I could see him get a little, like, uh, upset. And kind of like sulking or not sulking, but like kind of like pissed off and getting his head out of the game a little bit by the refs and them not calling stuff like that. But I do like to see him get going and standing and talking to a referee like Nate Green and getting more information from them and learning from the referees. This is the smartest thing that young players that just came in the NBA can do is get a rapport, get a relationship with these referees early. And maybe they'll show you favor over time because, they're like, oh, that's Scotty. He works hard. What a good young kid. What a great young kid in this league. He's the kind of superstar we want more of in this NBA. So maybe that's the kind of way you get favor is by establishing those friendships or not friendships, but just relationships with those referees. So maybe that's what Scotty's doing right now, talking to them. But he does kind of like looking at him. I can tell he's pissed when he's talking to them. And he's kind of like, uh, kind of like uh, exasperated when he's saying to this. So maybe like go like Fred when you come to them and kind of just like kind of talk to them and maybe not express so much with your face, Scotty, in some ways, because I can tell you're pissed at them. And I just don't want you to get texts and I don't want you to rub them the wrong way because we do want you guys to be friends and be happy and stuff like that. Precious, Chris, Nick Nurse, you have all said this summer, you love the refs and you want to get favor from them. <laughs> But yeah, it's good. It's good stuff, man. It's so good and stuff like that. But I like what you're saying, Cool Cat, about keeping Boucher and Precious together as a unit coming off the bench because they really do inject a, a, an energy and spirit on the court. If we're flat with the starting lineup, well, boom, there's a really quick antidote. Get those two dudes out there and it really changes our energy quick. And it can be the kind of change so drastic that it really gets the other team sh uh, sh shocked from the shift so suddenly. So like, oh, whoa, whoa, Boucher's out here crashing the boards like crazy and Precious is attacking the rim. OK, we're in trouble. And then add in Delano as far as like a third person that kind of comes in with them and his aggression with the way he's playing these days, too. Yeah, I like that. I like that off our bench. And we can afford to have those kind of great kind of aggressive players coming off our bench and they don't even need to start. Our team has a lot of wealth as far as talent. Um all right, let's see. Logical saying, gee, laughing my ass off. I thought exactly in the same ra second round. Masai said they thought he was going to go in this 20s and they got that type uh, on contract from the Raptors. These signals are dead on, too. You know, listen, yeah, that they had probably had a game plan, a couple different guys. And when they saw it got closer and closer 
and they saw Coloco was still there, they were probably giddy. They were probably like, what the fuck is wrong with this league? These people don't understand who this dude is. <laughs> ah, it's almost like Messiah on the download said, I got dibs. I got dibs on him. And nobody's like, oh, we can't pick him. Messiah got dibs on uh, Coloco. And so we can't get him. <laughs> like, why wouldn't you take him? Some other team, like all the teams that drafted before us, why wouldn't you take him? I think almost every single other team had the opportunity to take Christian Coloco before the Raptors did. And they didn't. <laughs> ah, uh, G saying, I cannot wait to see Otto in the mix. I know it's just like the rich get richer. It's like, he's going to come and show up. And the thing about Otto that's going to be so great is he really will be pretty dependable for three. Like he is going to be somebody that is going to show up and make threes consistently for us. And that is an area we're all worried about this year is that we've seen how dead we can go from three-point line all of a sudden. Well, Otto's a really good fix for this. It's very similar to kind of like Thad Young and how he calms down crazy energy in our game. Well, have the calming uh, presence of Thaddy Daddy on the court all of a sudden, and things look like they're a little bit more smoother and capable and like in their head instead of so crazy. It's going to be the similar thing with Otto, except he's going to calm down our shooting and make our shooting look better when it's not looking so good at times. We can say, Oh, we're not making shots. Get Otto, put him in. He will start making shots for us because of his veteran time and his knowledge and his consistency. He is a good, consistent scorer. He has been for most of his career. So, all right, let's see. I can't wait to see him either. Nameless. Oh, yeah, we have Otto Porter. Tom Duke's like, oh, yeah, we have Otto Porter. That's right. We have Otto Porter on our team. We haven't even seen him. <laughs> uh, uh, Hauser, Sam Hauser is Matt Thomas 2.0. He looks like Gordon Hayward 2.0. Like, they very look similar. Did you see what Gordon Hayward's new hairstyle looks like? He looks like Gummo. People have said that he looks like Gummo from that movie. He does. He does very much look like Gummo. And there's a lot of funny, like, uh, memes about uh, Gordon Hayward and how he looks right now and saying, this is what Charlotte does to you <laughs> being on the hornets this is what it does to you it's this man's hairstyle i mean it is a little weird like it's got a weird line and kind of like it's almost i don't know you go look at it you go see what gordon hayward looks like right now you be, you'll, you'll see what i'm talking about uh, uh cool cat saying pascal would be great for Otto and wancho's game where when he draws two and three defenders open threes yeah yeah they double down on him and boom balls out the wancho one and a three easy stuff i love all that kind of stuff uh, let's see. Nameless is saying, I mean, you could be talking about a major impact with Otto. He could. I mean, I, I think we should be measured with what we expect from him, that he could really will be kind of similar to Thad. But you see the impact that Thad has on our team. He very much is a factor and he really does do add a lot of intangibles. That's what I'm saying. We're going to see the three point shooting, but there's going to be a lot of intangibles that Otto brings when he's on the court also that are not just scoring. They're going to be like just really wise veteran smarts, uh, you know, things about the switching and the maybe just like knowing stuff. Because last night the Celtics pulled some vet shit on us a couple times last night. There was one move where Marcus Smart went to the basket on Scotty Barnes and he made a lay-in. And if you saw it afterwards, Marcus tapped uh, Scotty on the back and said, that's all right, Rook or young guy. This is just what I do. They were doing a couple of vet shit to us at different times. There was another point in the game where Al Horford drew a foul on Christian Coloco on purpose. Coloco didn't do anything. He did that classic move that a vet does where they get a young player that doesn't really know what they're doing. They're very young and he makes them foul them. He, Coloco did not mean to foul Horford in that moment. Horford came to him and made him foul him and put him on the line that he knew that they needed some points at that point, and he knew it was a rookie, and he's Al Horford. He's been in the league for so long, so he knows how to do that little move where he can get into uh, Coloco's body, and the referee will call a foul on Coloco. And Coloco protests, I didn't do anything. I didn't know. You, you're right. You didn't do anything. Al Horford did a vet move on you and got free throws by exploiting you being a rookie and not having experience. So that's kind of stuff that happens between vets and younger players then marcus smart will make a basket lay on uh, on on scotty barnes and then turn around and say well i'm just a vet bro uh, you'll grow up some more youngster and you'll know how to deal with that and stuff like or al horford drawing a foul on christian coloco well we're going to get that kind of intangibles from Otto porter that kind of vet savvy and those kind of things he could be the kind of guy that draws a rookie into a crazy foul on him 
like Al Horford did to Christian Coloco last night. So that's kind of part of what I'm saying with Otto Porter, Thad Young, their, their presence on our team will add to that kind of stuff for our team and stuff like that. So, all right, let me see. It jumped way ahead. Let me see what you guys are saying. I know there's a lot to say. It was a great game last night. I'm so happy to have so many great Raptor freaks here with me today uh, talking about this stuff. All right, Alistair's saying, wow, that they really cut DJ after all that. Yeah, they did, Alistair. It's just a part of the business. It's the road. It's the way it is and stuff like that. After all the, the three 10-day contracts last year, after all the trying to make the team this year, it just didn't happen. It's not meant to be that DJ Wilson's a Raptor full-time and stuff like that. He has had his time with us, and now it's over. And it, it is what it is. Stuff like that. Logical saying facts, Lex. Not gonna lie, not in the interview, not in interviews. Yeah, okay. So you agree with me about the signing, uh, not going on in interviews. Okay, cool. I want to just want that line. He can have that fun. Do it on open gym, do it in fun little like things that they make. Like, even if they did it, if he did it during like one of these things where they ask, Do you want ketchup on your eggs? and he just jumps in all of a sudden and does it. Of course, they'll edit it out, but I'm just saying there's a, a there's moments when to do it and when not to. And being on nationwide television and ESPN in the pre in the summer league when Ron Harper Jr. got an interview and he may not get an interview this whole season after this. And, you know, it's things like his dad's proud of him. And, you know, there's different things going on. And then all of a sudden, like Justin's calling him his son. Well, we know that that's not his son. His son, his dad is Ron Harper Sr., who's an NBA champion, who has won many championships. And Justin, you're not his father. Ron Harper Sr. is NBA champion, esteemed vet of the league. And it just looks bad. It's like I understand on our broadcast in Canada, you know, this Canadian audience, Canadian fans know about Justin's sunny thing, but the Americans did not. And when he did that at Summer League, when Ron Harper had his interview, his time to shine, it was so cringe for me. Because I knew it was like, this is the Americans are seeing this. And they're probably like, well, who the fuck is this clown just jumping in here? What was that? What was that whole thing? And like Jim Jackson and Ian Eagle or whatever the, the, the kid, Ian Eagle's son, Noah Eagle, were like kind of trying to cover it up afterwards. They're kind of trying to say, oh, I, I guess I don't know what that was and stuff like that. It was like, yeah, it's just not classy. It's just not classy. Pick your time and place to sign people. Uh, Justin, it's just better that way. I mean, it's better if you don't do it at all, but if you're going to do it, do that. Hey, guys, listen to this. Alexi is my son and Justin Champagne is on the Raptors this year, guys. I'm so happy about my brethren, Justin Champagne. Justin Bieber is proud of you, Justin Champagne. And Alexi is my son for thinking that DJ Wilson was going to be on the team. How could you go against Justin like that? The Justins, the Justins are all looking out and watching out and you better watch out, Alexi. All right. All right. I guess I'll admit it. I'm your son today. I have been sunned by the Justins. I've been sunned by all the Justin supporters and stuff like that. You're right. I was wrong and I feel bad about it. But also I'm like, I don't give a shit. I'm happy that the Raptors are winning <laughs> and we are badasses and stuff like that. Go Justin Champagne. I want you to do well. That's what I want. I want to see you do well on the court. That's what I'm saying. Uh, Guardian Transit saying one of the best NBA games I've ever watched last night. And it's preseason. The game was so entertaining. Kudos to OG, Barnes, Chewy, and Banton. Yeah, those were really kind of the stars. I would put Precious in the top three stars, but his shooting percentage was not that good last night. Uh, he shot four for 16. He missed all seven of his threes. He was 10 for 13 at the free throw line. Seven, re uh, eight rebounds, uh, four assists. 18 points. He was a minus 10. Now he wasn't that efficient. The, the thing is he wasn't hitting his threes, but he was definitely being very aggressive going to the basket. And that stuff I'm telling you, getting to the line in some ways, that was fantastic that uh, precious got so many free throws and was so aggressive and getting rewarded that way. That really made me happy. Uh, Monique saying, said it yesterday, Bo Cruz, uh, Adam Sandler is smiling somewhere about Bo Cruz. <laughs> Well, he is in the NBA and he's made a team. It's not the Celtics, thank God. Uh, Nako saying, save for Marcus Smart. I actually think the Celtics have likable players. I don't like Grant Williams either. Like, there's a couple guys I don't like. I don't like Tatum. Okay, the only, I'll, I better just list the guys I like because I don't like most of them. I'm on the opposite with you, Nako. I only like Jalen Brown, I think. I like Jalen Brown. Uh, 
Robert Williams the third. Maybe those two guys I like. I don't really like Al Horford. I mean, kind of. He may be kind of, but I hate Marcus Smart. I hate Grant Williams. I hate Jason Tatum. I hate Peyton Prichard. I hate Sam Hauser. I hate uh, Derek White. I hate Malcolm Brogdon. Uh, I, I hate all those guys. So there's maybe like three I like myself. This is my own personal opinion. I like Jalen Brown. I like Robert Williams the third. And uh uh Oh, I like that uh, Cabin, Cabin G. Lee. I like that FSU kid. He's really good. He didn't even play in the game last night. I'm like, why aren't you playing Cabin G. Lee? He's really good. Like, I think he's going to be a really good player and stuff like that. But I mostly hate most of the Celtics. I really don't like Jason Tatum. And when he got thrown out last night, I was very happy about it. I thought it was like, yes, golden boy getting thrown out in the third quarter. When do we ever see that? That was so awesome. I want to see more of it this season especially with these prima donna superstars that think they can say whatever they want to the referees. I want the referees to battle back and throw them out. I want to see LeBron James get thrown out of a third quarter of a game this year. Yes, do it because it'll show there's equity that there's not the superstar treatment that these dudes are not above the law and they will get thrown out if they act the same way as an ordinary role player. That's what I want to see this year, reps, and do it because this will make me love y'all even more and say I will echo to the highest mountains. The NBA reps are fair because I saw Jason Tatum get thrown out in the third quarter last night. I'll say that. I'll be like, these dudes are on the up and up. There's no more of this Donaghy shit. Scott Foster, fuck him. These guys are for real, and they really are really trying to call the game fair. And stuff like that. When I start seeing superstar calls not happening anymore. And superstars are getting treated the same way as everybody else. Just like what happened to Tatum last night. So good. So good. Uh, all right. Let's see. Logical saying Lex cooking on the extra stuff today. All right. Thanks, Logical. Yeah, I'm, I don't know. I'm just going in deep on what I'm trying to say here. Candy Kush. Good to see another new name. Uh I'm here every morning, 9.30 a.m. Tomorrow is a Sunday special report on the referees. I've done some uh, research on the referees, our records of under different referees. I'm going to be pointing out our favorite referees. I'm going to be talking about our hated referees. I'm going to be talking about all the different factors with the referees and how they can affect games and what we should be worried about as Raptor fans when we see the ref crews. Now, I do a lot of this already on previews where I do the ref check. But this is going to be a little bit different. This is going to be an overview of all the referees in the league and really talking about the different types of refs that you can get for different games and what they, you know, the differences are and stuff like that. So really interesting. All right. So Kenny Kush is saying, what guan ball head Rasta? Any win against Boston is a great win. That's right. Yes, right. That is right. Yes. And I will go and smoke the Mary Jane right after this when I'm done speaking like crazy man for a couple hours here about the game last night. A great win against the Celtics. Anytime we beat the Celtics, I don't care if it's in summer league. I don't care if it's in preseason. I don't care if it's an exhibition in Tokyo. I don't care where it is. We beat the Celtics is always a great, fantastic day. And, you know, listen, this just adds to the worry on the Celtics fan nation side about this season. You gotta understand, Boston has gone through all kinds of worries about that C word, that word that I don't like to use on this channel. That they feel like they have had different periods of time in their franchise history where they have had the C word around their team. You know, different people have had you know different things that have happened. You know, they drafted Len Bias and then he died of a cocaine overdose like that summer after he got drafted. This is the kind of stuff I'm talking about. Well, their off season, the way it went with the Doka. And then Gallinari being out for the season and different things like losing to the Raptors twice in preseason and overtime in both games, that has a little bit of chicken littling factor in Celtics Nation this morning. That They're a little bit like, uh, you know, they're going from feeling like a, a huge pedigree of being in the finals against the Warriors last year to being where they are a very shaky, unsure kind of fan nation right now, especially with the way the Raptors just handled them in a couple of different ways. They are not sure of themselves. In fact, some of them are already calling out that they want to get in the Victor sweepstakes and start tanking because they, they're like, this season's already, already all messed up because our coach, because Gallinari, because of this, because of that, and Robert Williams. And they're kind of like, let's fold up and go for Victor. That's crazy. Y'all were in the finals last year, but there are Celtic fans that have no faith in this team this season. 
and that they're seeing all these signs and they're saying, oh, this is going to be a bad year. There's a lot of them freaking out right now. A lot of them. Uh, G saying on another note, Lakers lost by 47 to the Kings. <laughs> Let's just go from one dumpster fire to the next dumpster fire. Lakers versus Celtics in dumpster fires. Russell, you are a liar. You're saying I'm a good teammate. I'm very happy being on the Lakers. You are such a liar. And now they put you on the bench. And that happened last night. All right, let me go look at this score that you just brought up. <laughs> ah, ah. Yeah, they brought him off the bench last night. He only played five minutes. He had five minutes on the court. He didn't score at all. He took two threes. He missed both of them. And he had two turnovers in five minutes. Uh, you know what? They need to trade him. They should have traded him this summer. They needed to get Kyrie for him. They should have done something. They got to get Russell out of there. Until he gets out of there, that team is going to be messed up. I, doesn't care. I don't care if Patrick Beverly's there trying to mend fences and fix everything between people. As long as Russell is there, that team is all messed up. I mean, we've seen all the clips and stuff like that. This is hilarious. They lost by that much. They have LeBron James and Anthony Davis on their team. How if these guys are so great. I mean, LeBron is great. There's no question. But Anthony Davis isn't that great. I'm sorry. Like, all right, he didn't play last night, but that's because he's hurt, as usual, and stuff like that. But, yeah, this is messed up. How does this happen? You just lost to the Kings by 47 points? That is an embarrassment. Laker Nation is just as much screaming and crying, maybe for victor sweepstakes, just like Boston Nation is right now. Uh, Monique saying, can we just take a moment for a Coloco opening speech in French and then smile? Monique, I am so happy you brought this up, this whole thing about – uh, uh, the speeches before the game. They did this in Edmonton. Of course, it was Delano there. But in uh, in uh, up here it, in uh, Montreal, it was uh, uh, Cabin Geely, right? Cabin Geely for the Celtics came and spoke because he's from Canada. He's Canadian. And then, uh, uh, Cam, uh, Cam, uh, no, Coloco. I thought it would be Cam Birch just because of Montreal. And it would have probably been Chris Boucher if he had been there. But it was Christian, Christian who did the pregame speech, and he was fantastic. He had a real charisma. He spoke in French. I think that the people in Montreal really enjoyed that both the representatives from the teams both came up and spoke to French to them. And uh, the Coloco was just really awesome. He did a really good job and, and, and just really good speaker in that moment. I really enjoyed that it was Coloco that did that and that, that beginning of the game thing that they did and stuff like that. Fantastic stuff. Uh, Guardian Transit saying, Coloco, seven strides. He's all the way down the floor. I know this man is like, a, woo. He's like, he can go far. He can go far real quick. Uh, Tom Duke saying, so cool. He seems so polished and he has a huge ceiling. Man, we are really on that Coloco train today. I love it. Uh, Fanatic saying, uh, Chris Boucher doesn't fake the funk. When he said he has a platform to help, was the direction he was starting with this contract more. Yeah, now that he's got some money and stuff like that, he can start doing something like his foundation, the Slim Duck Foundation. Fantastic stuff, giving back. Uh, G saying, uh, no Pascal, Gary, Boucher, and Otto, three, four key pieces, wrap step this year seems fire. Yes, 11-11. Uh, uh, yeah, I agree. We got really good depth. We're showing it off this preseason. Logical saying, I was so, I'm so honored – to do a video of his basketball journey. He's such a special person, in my opinion. You're talking about Chris Boucher. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, that, I, that's good. That's good content. Uh, Monique saying, with DJ not on the team now, which other teams need him if you had to choose one? I don't know. I don't know if he'll get picked up. I don't know. He's not G League eligible. This is part of the problem is that, yeah, maybe he does get picked up by somebody like the Knicks or something like that, just out of the blue or something like that. But there's no guarantees. And at this point, the season starts next week, and everybody's been doing their training camp battles on their own with cutting different people. Like Stanley Johnson got cut by the Utah Jazz yesterday. So, he, you know, different people are getting cut. Like Derek Favors got cut by Houston. That is a very serviceable, good, big, and they could probably get on another team. And stuff like that. Derek favors. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know how it always works out with these last cuts in training camps. Some of them just are done. Some of them go to Europe. Some of them go and play other places overseas. Some of them get into the G League if they're eligible. But some of them, you know, I don't know what's going to happen to DJ Wilson. 
And uh, I hope that, uh, you know, whatever happens to him, I wish him the best that he's able to make a good living off playing professional basketball, no matter what he does. And I'm sure he will. I mean, he could easily go somewhere else and make a huge fat contract. It's just not going to be in the NBA. And that's the sad thing about this crossroad is that the dream may be the NBA and he's been there and he's done a lot in the NBA, but this is how far he's gotten. It could be that he gets picked up by another team, but I don't think so. I think he's probably going to end up playing overseas is probably what's going to happen. Uh, G saying Mo Lakers in all seriousness. I think the Bulls could use him. The Bulls, the Lakers could probably use DJ Wilson. I think that that's true. So we'll just see. We'll see what happens and wish him the best. I feel bad for DJ. But once again, you know, I trust Nick Nurse and I trust uh, Bobby Webster. They made the right decision in this situation to keep Justin Champagne. So Justin's going to be on the team this year. And, uh, you know, I, I hope he does so many good things for us on the court. I really, really do. I think he will do good things. And, and you know, it may be that he plays a lot on 905 again this season. Justin may not get a lot of time, you know, just because of how much good players we have in our depth and stuff like that. I'd rather play Delano over Justin. I'd rather play a lot of the guys on the team. I'd rather play Jeff Doughton over J Justin in games and stuff like that, just because I know what I'm going to get with Jeff Doughton. For sure. So we'll have to see how it all uh, goes this season. Uh, let's see. Uh, Nameless is saying Scotty looked way more purposeful and powerful, for sure. He had his legs under him. The, a couple of preseason games, he just didn't look like totally swift. He looked a little lethargic, didn't look on top of things. That's the thing. His brain is a computer that perceives things so quickly, like above average than a normal NBA player. And that, you know, he wasn't reading the floor and moving in that kind of level until last night. And now he's doing it again. And we see that's the real Scotty. That's the Scotty who's on top of things, a step ahead, a decision ahead of other people and being in the right spot and doing the right things and making the next winning play. Once again, he doubled down in the interview after the game last night that his his most important concern in an NBA game is defense, that he is a defensive player first. And that everything he does on the court on the offensive end can germinate from him being really good on the defensive end. So if he doesn't have it on the defensive end, it's hard for him to do well on the other end. That that is very much the first thing. And he said the one thing he wants to accomplish this year is that he wants to be an all defensive player. That if he's going to get any accolade this year, forget about all star, anything like that, he wants to be all defensive. And it's weird because we talked to him about this uh, uh, in September about he was asking us, guys, what do you think I should go for this season? He literally asked us, the Twitch family, what, what awards do you guys think I should try and win this year? And we named all star and all defensive. And he was thinking about it in his head. He's like, which one would be cooler to get like all star or all defensive? He's like, I think all defensive would mean more to me and like what I want. We were literally watching him deliberate this on Twitch live, <laughs> like talking about this. But he decided at the end, he's like, I think all defensive sounds cooler in some ways. I mean, all star could come anyway also, but he really is more committed to be more looked at as an all defensive player. And that's what I'm saying. Some people on Twitter are saying, why do everybody think Scotty's so great on defense? Well, it's not even that we think he's great on defense. He wants to be great on defense. And he's that kind of player and talent that if he wants something, he can be it. So uh, that's why I don't doubt him as a defensive player and him possibly getting to the levels like Precious and OG as far as lockdown defenders that can be very versatile guarding everyone. Scotty's another one of those guys. And don't discount him just because we have two already. Why do we have so many? We can have as many as we want if we have them. So, Scott, we have three of those guys. I really look at it that way. OG, Precious, and Scotty are all the kind of same kind of guys that are going to be trying to do certain things on defense. They have the same goals. They all want to cut the water off and be the best defender on the Raptors. Well, something's got to give, but that competition's fantastic. That's such a healthy competition that these three gentlemen want to be the best defender on the Raptors. Well, something's got to give. OG's the best defender on the team, but Precious has shown some really good things in the playoffs last year and in different ways for his defense, and Scotty wants it. The desire's in his heart. So we'll have to see this fight, and it's not like we can really quantify it or really say we can just say that, wow, we've got three locks. And that's what I want to be able to say. We have three lockdown defenders at all five positions and stuff like that. I really love it. Um, logical saying, Mo, no doubt. Development and chance to show his skills was the opportunity, in my opinion. Um, 
Yeah, we'll have to see what DJ does. Scott B saying, what a night. Complete meltdown by the Celtics. Our bench crushed them. You had a good time at the game, Scott B. I'll bet you had a fantastic time. I'll bet it was a lot of fun to be in the Bell Center last night and watch this great, fantastic overtime win, the Raptors over the Celtics last night. Kudos to you, Raptor freak Scott B, for being on site and representing the crew in the house last night. Yeah, Kenny is saying it's official, y'all. Coloco is a stud. We are good. Yes, Kenny. Yes, yes. Speak the gospel, Raptor Freak Kenny. He is a stud, and we are good. Yeah, we are. Scott B. saying 100% Coloco was a beast. He saw it with his own eyes in real life. He saw that dunk where Coloco stretched out and threw it down nasty. Real nasty, like, oh, my gosh. It's absurd the length this man has. It's absurd. Uh, Goonie, good to see another new name. Goonie, thanks for subscribing. Uh, Siakam doesn't have to get at all the ball. I agree with this. We don't have to put the ball through Siakam all the time and stuff like that. In fact, maybe we do need to be more equitable uh, with how we, who we go to with different times down the court. You know, like we kind of switched back and forth between Scotty and OG last night a bit, although with a little bit of Precious mixed in there with it. Why not do this with Pascal when he's healthy? He doesn't have to be the end-all, be-all, go-to guy all the time. We can switch our go-to guy. And really, I think what the Raptors are trying to do is really recognize the mismatches. It may be very much who is Derek White guarding. Okay, we're going to go to the person that Derek White is guarding, and we're going to bully Derek White. Or who's Marcus Smart guarding? He's a little more savvy on defense as a little guy, but he can still be bullied. And it's really recognizing those mismatches and being aggressive in, in, in going after them. Because we've had those mismatches in the preseason before, and we've been kind of like half-heartedly getting into them. But we need to be aggressive, cutthroat, and just go right at them and abuse them. Like, really beat them over with the bully ball because we've got it. We're going to have it against every single team this year, and it's really going to be recognizing who is their small guard going to be guarding out of our 6-9 lineup, and let's get the ball to them and let them bully. They said it in the press conference last night. Nick is very much directing the team to do this bully ball and look for those mismatches when a smaller guy from the other team is on one of our big dudes like OG and stuff like that. And we saw it. It's very effective. And in fact, we proved in some ways that that'll beat the three-point shooting in a couple of different ways. The three-point shooting is going to get them more points. And that was a big part of why they had a margin over us the first half of the game. But it really, over time, we wore them down and bullied them down. And they, they stopped making those shots in the second half. So if they want to live and die by the three. They're making them sure you can be up ahead for a little while. But once you start missing those shots, what we're doing is way more consistent and easy to keep up and stuff like that. So I love our style. It may be not the most pretty. And people may say, how are you going to fucking win if you can't make any threes? Well, we'll show you how we're going to win. We're going to outwork you, out hustle you, out shoot you because we shot more shots than you and stuff like that. It really is a factor in last night. We look at the team stats. We got 107 shots to their 91. That means we got 16 more shots than them uh, overall through the course of the game. That is fantastic. That is a lot of shots. Uh, Monique is saying, Scotty interview after the game with Kayla. Also great to see Kia in the building and back with TSN this season. So she is going to be broadcasting or she's not going to be playing? I guess that she doesn't have anything to play in because the season's over for WNBA. Well, that's good. I'm glad to see Kia Nurse was there and interacting with Kayla. And Kayla was great. Like uh, a couple different interviews she did last night that I really enjoyed. The Kia Nurse, the Robert Parrish interview was fantastic. Robert Parrish is honestly a, a real Hall of Famer and a fantastic person. I love what he said about Bill Russell. I love what he was saying in the context of Montreal and Canada and Toronto. You know, it's just really cool to see a Celtics legend like Robert Parrish in Montreal for this game last night at the Bell Center. That was a big deal. And that kind of really signified that the Celtics were taking kind of half ownership of this game being halfway between Boston and Toronto. It really is kind of was neutral territory for us, even though the game was in Canada. 
there was some boss. There really, really was some Boston fans there. And Robert Parrish being at the game signified also a Boston kind of contingency in the game. So I love that interview. And then after the game, yeah, Kayla did a good job with Scotty. And Scotty was very well spoken, said the right kind of stuff after the game. I'm so proud of you, Scotty. And I know when I tell you I'm proud of you on Twitch, you're like, why are you proud of me? Why are you proud of me? I'm like, dude, just take that. People are proud of you. Proud of that you play for the Raptors, that you're the rookie of the year, and that you're part of our future. We're proud to have you around and take it, even though you're not used to it. And maybe you're not used to, you feel uncomfortable when people say they're proud of you. I understand. Maybe it's just something about how when you were raised and stuff like that. It's a hard thing. Or maybe you just don't understand why people would give a shit about what you're doing. <laughs> well, we do, and we love you, and we are proud of you. So that's what it is right there. Uh, Goonie saying we have a good bench. Boy, do we, Goonie. I love it. I love it so much. We ha have a bench that's good enough, good enough to play. Ay, 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 ay. <laughs> uh, Scott B saying, I got video clips of the crowd. It was amazing. That's awesome, Scott. I'm glad you had such a good time in the Bell Center over there and stuff like that. Y'all, check out Scott B's company. If you need some roofing job done around Montreal and stuff like that, Scott B can help you out with getting your roof reshingled and redone and stuff like that. Scott B's company is awesome. I, I know it is. So check him out. And uh, I don't know the name of it, though, Scott. I need to know the name of your company. Uh, Nako the Nacho saying Brooklyn needs DJ. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Let him go to there and stuff like that. Who cares? <laughs> They have problems, too, there. I mean, uh, uh, what was it? Like, Ben Simmons fouled out really quickly last night. Stuff like that. They're trying to play him at center, and he had a lot of fouls quick. <laughs> ah, all the dumpster fires are so entertaining around the season right now. Like, so far this season, you got Golden State, you got the Lakers, you got the Celtics, you got the Nets. They're all dumpster fires, and I love it. It's so good. Um, all right, let's see. Tom Duke saying Kayla does a great interview, in my opinion. Cool, Scott. Can you post them? I want to watch them. He, Tom Duke wants to see your footage, Scott B, from the game. Uh, Goonie saying Otto will be big. I agree with that. Scott B saying, sorry, I meant three technical fouls. Boston lost it or a bench had them frustrated. Yeah, those techs were really bad. And like I said, this really reflected on the rookie coach, Missoula. That, you know, he didn't have uh, things under control at that moment. He actually made things worse by getting his own technicals in that moment. Maybe that he didn't understand what the, how to deal with the ref in that moment without getting a tech. He might have said something that was like not right. I'm telling you, this is going to be an X factor for Boston season that people are underestimating that that coach is not ready. He should not be coaching that team. They can act like he's ready and stuff like that, but he has no clout. He has no respect in the league. The refs won't respect him. And in a lot of ways, he doesn't have the right experience to be running this team for Boston. He's going to help. He's going to help them be not good in some ways that people don't realize. Uh, all right, let's see. G saying, just thought about it. The key to Pascal and OG spacing may be Fred and his distribution. Him passing the way he did last night was also a big factor for OG's game. Yeah, they really set OG up nice in different ways. You know, you could see at the beginning of the game right away, Boston really is a really tough defensive team. And it's almost like a puzzle you have to solve. And we're doing all these motions and moving around and trying to move the Celtics players, but they're switching and doing a really good job. And it was that first lay in this that OG got. He kind of came, kind of swung around and was swinging towards the basket coming around. But they had swung the ball around the whole court and almost everybody had touched it. And then finally they got beat the defense and OG did that nice little uh, slick lay in to make it in. That was a very calculated way to beat the Boston defense, but they had to work hard to do that. That's part of the thing that makes us look so bad on offense is we're having to beat defenses that are working really hard and you have to unsolve them like a puzzle, like a Rubik's Cube. It's like the Boston Celtics defense is like a Rubik's Cube. And then right at the beginning of the game, they're fresh and they're really on it and stuff. You have to kind of find that crack and move the ball around in certain ways and stuff like that. And that really was what happened when OG made that nice cruising layup to the basket at the beginning of the game for our first basket last night. That was solving the puzzle. But it, it took some work. It took some work, if you noticed. Uh, G saying Delano's passing and play was a big factor in their spacing. Delano's just a really good X factor for us to have. I like the fact that we have two second round picks from the last two years that have kind of like um, – uh, extra uh, powers that add to things on the court more than just who they are, whether it's uh, the presence of Coloco or just the aggressiveness and the length 
combination of Delano Banton. These are guys that are really, really are rotation players for us. And like they're second round picks in some ways that is really awesome. And a testament to once again, Bobby Webster and Masai Ujiri, just really smart drafting and stuff like that. These guys are very useful and they're showing skills that are kind of unique in some ways. They're not all over the league and stuff like that. So, um, all right, let's see what else is going on. Uh, logical saying land of the giants, AKA the paint. Yeah. That's where, that's where Fred goes in the land of the giants. That's what I call it. And last year he looked really bad in the land of the giants, especially when he was hurt in the second half, but other times he can look like such a giant killer with his nice little fall on the floor spins and it goes in and stuff like that. I love that kind of stuff. A uh, cool cat saying, remember from the chip run, we had potent options. That is what we are doing. We can't cancel other players. We need all the options. Exactly. And we don't know which one. And, and like I said, I've likened our team to a, a piano, just like Nick nurse likes to sit at the piano and play the keys. He just has to know the right tune for each night. And some nights he may be hitting that B flat a little bit more, or maybe that high C a little bit more. And that means he's going more to OG, or that means he's going more to Delano for this reason, or Precious or something like that. That's what we have to understand. That Nick Nurse is playing the piano literally before the game and after the game to clear his head, but also during the game and the players are the notes. And that he just has to find the beautiful melody for that night. And it may not be the same song every night. And the main notes may not always be Pascal and Fred, Pascal and Fred. It may be sometimes Gary and OG, Gary and OG, or Precious and Chris, Precious and Chris. It's going to be different. It's going to be different almost every night. And we need to allow for that and, and just enjoy it and be like, wow, our team is really balanced and we have a lot of good players. And that's not a bad thing. That's a real strength. Uh, Monique saying daily reminder, 7 p.m. Wednesday night. Get there early. That game is early. If you've got to work that day, go straight from work to the arena. Seriously, don't even try and go home. Don't do none of that. Go straight to the game from wherever you are when you get done from work because you want to get there early. And a 7 o'clock start on a Wednesday night for the season opener is bad because this is similar to what happened with Washington last year. You know, we have that season opener. They put it at 7 p.m. sharp. That means they're going to start the game right at 7 or 7.07. And if you're not there till 7.30, you miss the first half, quarter of the game. So really make sure you get there on time because we want to have that energy good right away. We don't want to have empty seats in the lower bowl. And it is a factor. It really is a factor when we have late people show up. I love that I heard Matt Devlin say that the fans were there right when the doors opened last night for the Montreal game last night. That is exactly the kind of behavior we need the fans to have is be there right when the doors open, just like they did in Montreal last night. This way we can ensure there will be good energy right away at the jump ball at 7 p.m. on Wednesday night. And it matters. Trust me, it matters. It can help how we start the game by having good energy and having good support right away, right at the beginning of the game. Uh, G saying, cool cat, agree with you. All are important. We can't turn players on each other. Just figure out schemes to play to all their strengths. Yeah, like some Raptor fans think of it as like, okay, OG played so good. We don't need Pascal anymore. Let's trade him. That's all a lot of people are probably saying today. Idiots. That's the thing is that we want to have all this glut of things. And this is the abundance uh, mindset, is that you want a lot, continue to have a lot, have a mindset of abundance. And we have abundance on our team right now. We want to continue to have that. And it's just like in real life. Sometimes you get in a limited mindset when you say there's not enough for everyone and they pit us against each other and it becomes a doggy dog world. And financially, I'm talking about in real life, your everyday life. Well, they want you to believe that there is an abundance of things. There's enough for everyone. But the way they drive us in the, the society as consumers and people to have to go work and stuff is they tell you, you need this, you need this, you need this, because there's other people trying to take it from you. That There's a scarcity mindset that says there's only a certain amount and that's all there is. Well, it's not that way. We have to think in abundance mindset. There's enough for everyone on the court offensively for the Raptors as a team. And it's also true in real life for all of us in re the real world. It's just that there's greedy people. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> all right. Let me keep going. Um, uh, uh, cool cat saying, I think we're going to the golden state route. We're developing and keeping our core players and we're not going the DeMar route. We have lifers on our team. I hope so. And that's telling me where I am on the timestamp. I'm exactly an hour behind. <laughs> 
Uh, Killer Cat with effects again. All right. Uh, Monique saying TSN doing a Raptor season preview Monday, I believe. So look out for it. I'm doing one too. I'm going to do my season preview on Monday. So look out for it Monday morning. I'll be doing my rankings of who I think is going to be where in the Eastern Conference. More looking at the Eastern Conference. It's more my specialty. Probably won't talk about the West too much, but I'll definitely break down all the Eastern teams and kind of where I see them in the the pecking order of where they should be this year as far as uh, where they uh, in the standings and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> Tom Duke saying cool, cool interview with Robert Parrish during the game with him admiring what Bill Rush accomplished in his culture. Yeah. really like to see big chief there. Um, <clears throat> Coloco was forcing Boston to chuck up threes and miss after miss. They were shook of Coloco last night. Trust me. That's what nameless is saying. hundred percent, hundred percent about speaking reality into existence. 100%. Toronto Raptors, NBA champions, 2023. Toronto Raptors, NBA champions, 2023. Uh, cool Cat saying, we're not trading Gary Trent Jr., guys. He's still developing at a young age. Stop talking about trade value. That's right. We're not trading people. We're not trying. We got the right people. We need to keep going. Uh, Isaac saying, uh, Fred could lead the league in assists. I will keep saying it. Everyone around Pascal and Fred are getting better. Those two will just adapt their games in order to win now. Fred said it. He's going to do whatever it takes for us to win championships. He will take a back seat as far as he needs to, or he will take over as much as he needs to. He's willing to do both. That is such a luxury. This dude is not that much of an ego head that he has to get his every single time. He knows that he can turn his water off and let other people take the shine at times. But he's also a great emergency person. That if all things are going bad, Freddie will step up and save the day. So that's what we have to think in those kind of ways with these guys. Uh, Nameless is saying Coloco is going to fill out 100%. I think he'll end up around 250. Ooh, I don't want him to get too heavy. But, yeah, 250 is not a bad weight for his height and that stuff like that, especially if it's all muscle and stuff. Yeah, uh, scary stuff. Scary stuff indeed. Ooh, it's a scary time of the year, October. Uh, Monique saying, uh, news and notes, Thad's son, Thad Jr. playing for made basketball this year. Something to talk about. Follow, you follow Thad's wife. Good stuff. Good stuff. I know that, um, uh, uh, Ken Birch's mom was very proud of him in the game in Montreal last night. That was a big deal to, uh, Ken's mom. Uh, and stuff like that. And that's cool to hear that Thad Young's uh, kids are getting uh, to new levels in their basketball, uh, young basketball careers and stuff like that. They're very similar to me, like Gary Trent's brothers. They're coming up and coming stars. We're going to have to see Thad Young Jr. down the road where he, maybe he gets drafted and he's in the NBA. We have to see Gary's son Trent, Grayson Trent, these young Trent boys, and then also the Thad Young boys. They're, they're all coming up. We'll have to see who they are and what kind of prospects they are down the road. Uh, G saying the pre this preseason Canadian tour has really made me appreciate Raptors fans all around Canada. The fans have shown up and represented well. Yes, I'm so proud too. Like seriously, this is not normal for NBA teams. You know, you can't go in other places in Florida and have the Orlando Magic get this kind of ovation and stuff like that. <laughs> you know, it's not like this and stuff like that. It's very, very awesome. And I am proud of our Raptors nation also, G. Uh, for showing up and being so awesome with the energy and just selling out and just everything. And I know that they all enjoyed it too. Edmonton and Montreal, thank you. You guys were awesome this year. And Victoria too, for sure. Victoria and Tom Duke and everybody out there. Uh, let's see. Monique saying sold out crowd. Yep. MK, good to see you, MK. It's been a bit. Always good to see you. Too bad Boucher didn't get to play, though. I know. If there's one thing that's kind of sad about yesterday, other than the people getting cut, is uh, Boucher not being able to be there in person and stuff like that. Uh, cool Cat saying, teams didn't take Coloco because Raptors didn't work him out for draft. We already spoke to him out of sight. Teams picked everyone we worked out for the draft. Chess move. That's an interesting strategy, Cool Cat. And I'll bet that may have been what happened and stuff like that. That like We kind of kept him on the down low under wraps and that you didn't make a lot of noise about him. <laughs> and that we got him on the sly. I like that. And that may be true. That really may be true. Uh, what you're saying there. I love that so much that we may have kept them on the down low. All right, Rod, uh, random gamers here. We hadn't seen random gamer in a bit. So this is going to be really cool to see. Uh, Logical saying, uh, Messiah is too smart for the league. It's not even fair. In some ways that's true. 
um, G saying this may actually be very truthful. I like, I like, I think that Cool Cat is right about this because there was nobody talking about Coloco in a lot of ways. And they might have hit him. And maybe Coloco was trying to hide too. He's like, I want to be on the Raptors. So he's like hiding. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, hey, uh, the Celtics are calling you, uh, Christian. He's like, Shh, just hang up. I'm going to the Raptors. I want to go in the second round of the Raptors. Hang up. <laughs> Christian's like, I got to play with the great Pascal Siakam. I can't be drafted by anybody else. Ah, it's hilarious. He's like hiding. Uh, logical saying, but also it was a visa thing, but they played around it on a bit. Yeah, the visa thing kept them from coming here initially right after we got them for a little bit. But I don't think that would keep anybody from the States from drafting. I mean, he was already okay to play in the States. It just wasn't in Canada. So in a way, that was a detriment for him to be on the Raptors. We overcame it. Uh, cool Cat saying, just like our chip run, we have different about three different play styles in a game. It does seem like that. It really does. Uh, G says... Uh, I remember reading some advanced stats on auto and they were great. We'll try and find them. Yeah. There's a lot. There's all kinds of things about his game that are really good. That'll add to us. I uh, want to see more of Coloco once regular season starts. That's what Monique's saying. Click saying just woke up. What's up guys. Click. I hope you had a great time at the game last night. I'm sure you did. If there's anything that happened at the game last night. You want to add like Scott B has been telling us already, please put it in there. Uh, represent the Montreal Raptor freaks for showing up and making it good. Uh, Click saying, so happy I was at the game. Tickets overpriced, but amazing game. Disappointed and precious in our three-point defense, though, but it was fun as hell. You know, listen, I don't want to get too nitpicky because there were so many good things that happened last night. The three-point defense could have been better in the first half. Boston does a really good job of finding their open three-point shooters. It really is the kind of thing where Brown and Tatum go to the basket and they just kick it out and boom, there's Grant Williams in the corner or Derek White, who had not missed any threes in the first half. Derek White was like absolutely perfect from three-point range in the first half, and that was a little troublesome. But, you know, once again, we're going to take what we can take and do what we can do, and hopefully at the end, this is all that matters. And I love that you got entertained by such a good game. I know it was overpriced, but would you say it was worth it in some ways to make it and go and see that spectacle, an overtime win over the Boston Celtics? That's just – that's gold right there. Just saying that is an overtime win over the Boston Celtics. Yeah, yeah. Uh, random gamers here. Let's hear what Philly fan thinks about our little tilt with uh, Boston last night. What's up? guys can't wait for the season just a few more days i don't want to be that guy but y'all know this is the 70 76 season right <laughs> i love it random gamer i missed you i know you've been busy going to school you just started university this fall and i hope you're getting really uh, acclimated to university life and things are going good for you so far this fall semester and stuff like that i knew you were gone a little bit partly because you're getting set up for school and stuff like that but yes tuesday you guys get the guys we beat last night i hope you beat the hell out of them too and it is true it is the 76th season of the nba and i don't know if numerology will help you guys this year but that might not hurt that it is if like the nba is looking at it, it's like maybe we should let the sixers win again finally because it is the 76th year and it hasn't been since 1983 so maybe yeah maybe this year is y'all's years and stuff like that respect random gamer good to see a good sixers fan hanging out with us again today and uh, I know I'll see more of you, especially since we're going to be seeing you guys up here in Toronto uh, very early in the season for two games in a row. Uh, cool Cat saying, logical. Coloco's visa thing was not an issue. We worked out Pascal in the U.S. with the visa issue for the draft. Coloco said he knew Raptors have been scouting him for years. Oh, yeah. I mean, obviously, he's got to have known Pascal for a while. He's got to have known Ma Masai for a while. And that, like, this is preordained. And like I said, it may be true that Christian was kind of like his fingers were crossed behind his back. It's like, I really want to be on Toronto. I really want to be on Toronto. And then it's just like, yes, I'm on Toronto. And it all worked out and stuff like that. Click saying, how was the crowd from the perspective of watching the game on TV? It was pretty loud. There were a couple of Celtics fans. I wanted to tell them to shut up. <laughs> It was really good. You guys sounded like Edmonton. You guys were nice and loud. In fact, some people were saying that when you guys were doing the Let's Go Raptors chant, that you guys sounded, you could tell, you could hear a little bit of the French accent on the end of it. That it was kind of cool to hear the Montreal crowd do Let's Go Raptors. And it sounded that had that little bit of a French accent in the Let's Go Raptors chant. So that that was, I forget who was saying that. I think that was uh, Doug Smith or somebody. One of the twit heads was saying that. And yeah, there were a lot of Celtics fans. At the beginning of the game, they did a nice pan across the whole arena. And I saw that it was probably about like 15 to 20% of the crowd was actually Celtic fans. 
and stuff like that. There was a lot of green there. Uh, G saying when Tatum got ejected, making gestures, Jack Armstrong said something like, "My wife makes these gestures to me." Ah, ah, uh, yeah. Jack Armstrong giving us another one. It's not necessarily Ron Jeremy, but it, it was pretty good at that moment. It's like my wife makes those gestures to me all the time. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> ah, oh, so good, so good. Uh, uh, logical saying, yeah, the Buffalo workout on Zoom or something was just a check in. Uh, Monique saying, I'm really excited for the Raptors main bench unit. Precious, Chris Boucher, Otto Porter Jr., Delano Bant, Thad Young. With the exception of Fred Van Vliet and Gary Trent Jr., the entire rotation should be fire. Well, those guys will be fire too. And you should put Coloco in that list too, because he really is going to be there. And Wancho's not far from being involved in that also. So, yeah, I really like our bench. It's going to be really good. Uh, fun guy saying the crowd was insanely hit, just as much as Edmonton, if not more. Yeah, I agree. I agree. MK saying Jason Tatum complains a lot. And, well, he got what he deserved from complaining a lot last night. I love the uh, way that the refs were last night. Good job, Giamitas. In the beginning of the game, you were a little rough on the Raptors and real harsh. Very tough, tough ref, the Lithuanian ref. But he was very good last night. I love that he stood up to Jason Tatum. In fact, there was a little bit of an unsurety that at that moment, they could have been like, all right, if it had been Adoka or Brad Stevens coaching the Celtics, I, I would have seen this. They come over and they say, look, you can't throw Jason Tatum out. He's our superstar. He's the one that everybody pays to see. You think all these Boston Celtic fans in the crowd right now paid the money to come to this game to not see the best player the Boston Celtics play in the last quarter of the game? You can't throw him out right now. This is like throwing Michael Jordan out or something like that. They could say this kind of stuff to him. But I don't think Missoula knew what to say in that moment. He may have been dumbstruck by it. It's like, whoa, they're throwing out my best player all of a sudden. And he didn't know how to react to this. In fact, he got a technical instead of doing it. Like there could be ways to massage this and finesse it to say, well, can you just switch the technical to somebody else? And like Jim is like, no, Tatum, he's being a little bitch and he's got to go because I'm not having it this year. I'm selling y'all. This is not going to be happening this year. This little brush off kind of shit. And he's got to go. Because like I, I could see a more experienced coach really fighting for their guy and maybe getting it either overturned or switched to another one. There's like that happens sometimes. If you notice at the end of games, if there's a guy who has five fouls and he's a really good superstar player, but there's somebody close to them, like LeBron fouls somebody and should be a six foul and he's supposed to be fouling out. Well, they all of a sudden mysteriously the fouls on Stanley Johnson. You know, that kind of stuff happens with superstars. Well, it didn't happen last night. They made it very clear. But in that moment of confusion, I was like, man, don't overturn this. Just toss him. Make a statement, Giamitas. And he did. He didn't like kowtow to them and say, oh, yeah, it's Tatum. I can't do this. He did. He went through with it. And it was so awesome to see. And I loved seeing it. And he deserved it. He deserved that, MK. You're exactly right. He complains a lot, and he got what he deserved. Uh, Click saying Delano Banton is going to be insanely good in a few more years. Click saw it with his own two eyes last night. That that man is good the way he plays on the court. Uh, let's see. Raptor Freak. Cabin J is from uh, Burlington. Cabin Geely is from Burlington. Cool, cool. But he knew French, which was very cool. I like that. Ref deep dive. Yeah, tomorrow. It's going to be really good, guys. 9.30 a.m. Sunday special report. The one I've been talking about all summer. I've been doing research on it a lot. Punching all the numbers, looking to see who the best refs are to the Raptors and who the worst ones are. And we're going to talk all about that ref report tomorrow. Finally, I promised it a long time ago, months and months ago, and it's finally coming tomorrow, 9.30 a.m. You won't want to miss it. You really won't. Random gamers saying, whoa, 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 whoa. Without superstar calls, how is Joel and Harden going to play basketball? I don't know if I want that. <laughs> I hope they start calling y'all the same way like they did Tatum last night. It'd be fantastic if the NBA is finally going to do this. We'll have to see. I mean, James is doing other things with his game now. that Maybe he can make up for it, something like that. We'll have to see. I don't like seeing that your big man already messed up P.J. Tucker's ankle by rolling around on the ground like a fish like he does. What's going on with that random gamer? Why is Joel Embiid hurting P.J. Tucker before the season even starts? With his timber, I'm falling. Like, they need to yell that. You, you guys need an assistant coach on the Sixers team that just yells timber whenever Joel's about to flop. 
because it's just for safety concerns. Just protect your own players. Because you like did did to Danny Green at the end of the year last year. You did it to PJ Tucker already. So you need to get one of those assistants. Maybe it's Sam Cassell. Sam Cassell is just yell, Timber, Joel Embiid is falling. Get out of the way. <laughs> It's like, why does he do that? Oh my gosh. A uh, click saying, so we officially cut Wilson, Jackson, and Brown. It was expected. Champagne did some good, great things. Important to keep in mind that his role will be smaller in the regular season. Yeah, I agree with this. And it may be partly really much culture, really much culture. And uh, like people have said today also, he's been invested in with time, very much like Malachi. People are like, why do we have Malachi still? Well, we've invested a lot into his development. And stuff like that. And Champagne is that kind of way, too, and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's sad to see these other guys go. Gabe Brown will still be around. But the other two, I have no idea what's going to happen with them. A uh, random gamer saying, laugh out loud at G. I might be a Sixers fan, but I'm a fair one. <laughs> That's part of the reason why we love you here and enjoy interacting with you. It's so cool to have, like, a couple of Sixers fans, a couple of Celtics fans uh, that actually come in and we can have, like, civilized discussions. This is very important as Atlantic Division arch rivals and all the things we go through, especially with that playoff with Sixers last year and stuff like that. We appreciate you, Random Gamer. And we have missed you in the couple of weeks you haven't been around, the last weeks or so and stuff like that. But we know you'll be around, especially when we're going to play, y'all. Uh, Click saying Montreal has a big basketball presence, but the language issues will prevent us from getting a team. However, if the NBA wants to be international, it would be a great idea. It's it, honestly that is smart. It's honestly what David Stern would want. Uh, rest in peace, David Stern. Uh, that he would love the fact that this is this case and stuff like that. In fact, that is probably more attractive than a detriment in some ways because it really will give it an international feel without actually making it geographically very difficult. That this is still a city that people can get to in North America that'll do some things. I really like Montreal having an NBA team and I want them to get one. I really do. I really, really, really do. I want there to be two Canadian teams again because I want that kind of rivalry within our country. I love having the whole country for us. But in some ways, there's also something really special about having another Canadian team with us. In some ways, it'll help us with different things that we go through with the media and different things. If there's two of us, especially there's one that's not as far as long as us, we may get more respect than them in relation to things. And that means we go up in the pecking order of respect in the league. So there's different reasons why I'd love to have a team, a franchise based in Montreal very soon in the future and stuff like that. The rivalry would just be fantastic, honestly. Uh, yeah. Click Messiah understands this. Uh, Lakers could use DJ Wilson. Cool cat thinks that. Yeah. Uh, Click saying Jeff Doughton is a stud. I think we can all agree with that. He's just really cool. I really like Jeff Doughton. Uh, logical things. Doughton is about to take Flynn's spot, in my opinion. It could very well happen. Uh, you know, we'll see how the minutes go with the backup point guard stuff. There's so many options with point guard on this team at this point. It's really weird. Uh, Click saying, yep, Flynn is cooked, in my opinion. Doughton looked more calm on the court. He has perfect timing, knows the right time to pass and score. Just very, very smart player. Plays within himself and just does good things on the court. He makes things happen even when things are kind of chaotic. And I like that. I really like that. Uh, fun guy saying, I told everyone, Scotty with energy and conditioning is a damn world breaker. He's so good and unstoppable. Yeah, it really does look like that fun guy. I love that about him so much also myself. Uh, cool Cat saying, don't forget that Pascal also defends the one through five. That's right. I got to put him in there with them too. It's like we have four locks. It's just Pascal doesn't get any of the, the shine for the defensive stuff because he's more of an offensive player and stuff like that. Uh, let's see. Uh, fun guy saying I'm about to finesse my way back into a new Twitter account and and not this time not get banned. <laughs> yeah, just block or mute as many of the people you disagree with. Just don't even go there with them. There's such a cesspool on Twitter. Trust me, fun guy. Go back at your own risk is what I'll say. And I love that G's laughing with you. Uh, uh, quick saying, as long as we don't result in isolation a lot, I'm fine with different players having more opportunities. It has has to come naturally through ball movement, though. Yeah, yeah, they really just got to work off each other. We saw more of them working off each other, and it looks real good. Fred and Coloco, what a pairing. You know, there's a couple of different things that they did with the switching, and they're still doing the flex offense. You see them doing the crisscross at the top of the, the, the three-point line. That is the flex offense initiation, and they're still kind of looping around and doing flex offense kind of stuff with what they're doing. But I just wish the flex offense implemented more two-man game easier. 
like more give and go, more pick and roll and stuff like that. But yes, I'm a big, I'm with you click on less isolation in general. That should only be if we have to, because things are broken down and we just have to go that route in that kind of way. Uh, logical saying fun guy. Twitter is quite the mess. In my opinion, there's all of you pushing to a point of shoving down throat tactics and the truth gets very little attention in my opinion and stuff like that. All right, let's talk about something that happened yesterday that is, is kind of silly. The Malcolm Brogdon uh, interview. Yeah. Yeah. This is hilarious, you know, and I know we're going to boo him. We may boo him in Toronto this year, partly because of what he said. He didn't need to go and say this stuff and stuff like that. In some ways he's kind of slighting us. Yeah, but it's kind of dumb, too. In some ways, it's kind of an honor. Because, listen, I want to clear the, the, the air on this because there's a lot of misconceptions about this Malcolm Brogdon thing that happened yesterday with him saying that the, this is what he said. The Pacers came to him and said, we would like to trade you to either the Toronto Raptors or the Boston Celtics. Which team would you prefer to go to? And well, Malcolm said, well, I feel like the Celtics are further along towards getting a championship, which is valid because they were in the finals last year. So I would like you to trade me to Boston. Well, a lot of people are jumping to conclusions and thinking two things. First of all, they're thinking that we had an offer to try and get Malcolm Brogdon. We did not. There was never an offer on the table by the Raptors to try and get him. In fact, we may not have even talked to Indiana about Malcolm Brogdon in the least. You know, maybe we inquired him, oh, is he available? But there was never any concrete offer. It's not like we said, we'll give you Gary Trent or Malachi Flynn or somebody like that for Malcolm Brogdon. There's no such thing. And then the second thing that we need to understand is what this says is that Indiana wanted to trade with us. It's kind of like Indiana has said, these are two teams that we would like to get assets from, the Celtics and the Raptors. And this is who we would like you to, to think about going to and stuff like that so we can make a deal. So it's really kind of flattering. First of all, we did not necessarily want Malcolm Brogdon. It's Indiana wanted to deal with us possibly when they dealt Malcolm Brogdon away. That Those were the two teams that they wanted to deal with because they like our assets. So first of all, everybody who's speculating on Twitter in the last 24 hours about what the deal was that the Raptors sent to the Pacers for Malcolm Brogdon, there was no deal. There was never an offer that never even got to that point. As soon as the Pacers heard from Brogdon that he would prefer to go to Boston, they put all their energy into talking to them. And there was probably never even real discussions between the Raptors in a realistic way about him coming here. So everybody who's talking about, oh, we missed out on Brogdon, good. We don't want him. Trust me, he sucks. And then everybody who's trying to figure out who we were going to trade for him, just give up that unnecessary energy because there was no offer. In fact, I don't even think we actually wanted him. This was all from their end of the thing, that they wanted to deal with us because they want players from us like OG Ananobi. They specifically want OG Ananobi in Indiana on the Pacers. And that they were, these were the two teams that they said they would trade with. And then Malcolm picked them. Now, sure, we can say he slighted us, but he's right. They are a little further along in some ways, but they may not be at this point. Uh, so we'll have to see. But yeah, higher ambitions, number two, you go ahead, Malcolm Brogdon. But Raptor fan, realize we were not necessarily interested in getting him. This is just from them on their end of things talking about it. So we got to make these clear distinctions about this Malcolm Brogdon shit that happened yesterday. We did not necessarily want him. Indiana wanted us to trade with them because they like our team and our players. And he just wanted to go to the other team. So they didn't even talk. So I don't even think Bobby had a deal for them. I don't think he did and stuff like that. So that's a really important thing because Twitter's getting out of control about trying to speculate. Oh, they wanted Gary. And that's now they're just thinking one plus one equals two. And that, that we tried to trade Gary for uh, Malcolm Brogdon. You're fucking crazy. They're not even same level uh, player in any kind of way. So, yeah, there's a lot of idiocy on Twitter, uh, partly because of our struggles in preseason, partly because of this Malcolm Brogman thing that sprung up yesterday. It's so silly, so dumb. I, I'm glad I remember to talk about that because this is something that I really had a burning desire to talk about, how Twitter is just overreacting about the Brogman thing yesterday. Uh, Click saying Derek White ain't a shooter like that. 23 points is a rarity for him. Plus, he got cooked on defense all night. Oh, he was a bull. We got bullied him. Like, this is Scotty loves to do the bully ball. He said he's a little baby on his back. You know, Click, you've been in the Twitch stream. That was a little baby on Scotty's back. He loves having a little baby on his back. Oh, baby, want baby? 
baby food? You want baby food? We feed you baby food. Bam. Make the shot over them. You know, because Derek White, they're licking their lips. It's like I was saying. They're going to look for the mismatch. They'll say, who's Derek White guarding? Yeah, let's go to him. That's where we can get a basket and stuff like that. Uh, let's see. Nameless Sam Barnes, OG, Coloco, Precious. Man, did they ever slam that rock hard? Yeah, Precious. Mwah, yeah. <laughs> Coloco, wow, wow. Oh, man. Click saying, I'm sure people came in from Boston to watch the game, but it's also the thing where we don't have an NBA team, so people just choose any team to support. I just support the team closest to me. Well, also, you know, historically, there may be, like, basketball fans for a long, long time, and y'all are pretty close to the Boston market in New England. So that's part of it is, is proximity. And that a lot of people around there may like the Celtics way before the Raptors even came into existence in the nine in around 95. So th there may be like very old basketball fans that have been Celtic fans for like decades and that they, they, they were at the game last night and stuff like that. Uh, Nameless saying we have a powerful ass roster, man. Strong, strong, strong. We have a powerful roster. We have a powerful fan nation. We have a powerful GM president. We have a powerful coach. We have a powerful team captain. We have a powerful rookie. We have a powerful rookie of the year from last year. We have a lot of power. We have a lot of power, and uh, we are going to flex it this year. We're going to be bullies. We're going to be bullies. Uh, click saying our three-point defense must be better. Too many open threes, especially in the first quarter. Yeah, I mean, that has been an Achilles heel for us a couple years now. And we could always do better. I love, all right. One thing I really liked about the game last night was these side blocks that we saw. We saw OG do one running out of bounds. <laughs> the Celtics in the corner and OG's just running as fast as he can. And he got it. He blocked the shot. And then Josh Jackson did one in the second half exactly like that where they have an open three-point shooter and they just run all out and they catch the side of it and, it and they actually block it from the side. I love that play. And that is what we're talking about that can help with what the problem is you're talking about click. It's just that exertion of going all out. You know, a lot of the design plays that the Celtics do are very, very finely mastered handcrafted to get the three point shooter as open as possible. And it's hard to go around those schemes and the way they do the screens and cut people off from getting the guy. Like they called them on the legal screen and one play because uh, they do that kind of shit. So they're really working hard to get their three pointers open. And that's part of the reason why we look bad with it is that they, that really is one of their main things that they're trying to do on offense with Boston's work the ball to get that open three point shot. And they'll do, they have really crafty ways of doing it with really weird hedges and screens and, and different ways they pass it out of the double team and stuff like that. So it's not, I mean, we could do better for sure. And we weren't as good at like other preseason games. So I thought we were okay last night. And as evidenced by OG running out and getting that side block and stuff. But very at the beginning of the game, this was very evident what you're saying, Click, that we could not guard the three very well at all. It was kind of a problem. Uh, random gamer saying, I'm so ready to mop the floor with Boston on open night. First game of the season and Boston's going to get exposed. Let's go, baby. Yeah, I'm rooting for you guys. Honestly, I am. I'm going to root for the Sixers over the Celtics all year long. You guys play the Celtics, beat them down good. Yeah, I'm all about that. I want James Harden on my fantasy team right now. I'm trying to trade with the Saboran brothers, but they won't give me anything. They won't. They want. They, I don't know what they want from me. I can't get Harden from them. I thought they didn't want Harden on their team. I'm trying to get them on my fantasy team, but they're they're hedging. They're making it hard to trade with. They're being kind of like Sean Marks is right now. Stuff like that. Uh, let's see. Click saying, bro, it was fucking packed last night. Left my house an hour early, got downtown in 30 minutes and took us like 25 minutes just to pay for parking. Mental. That's awesome. So happy to hear you guys did bring it right. And it did translate over the television click. It really did. Uh, G saying random, not gonna lie. Sixers look good this year. They have some nice depth and youth to complement the vets. It will be a battle between our teams. You guys beefed up. And that is the biggest difference this year. The beef is the beef is something you guys lacked in the playoff series against us. And you guys still beat us, but we were hurt. That was part of it. But now you guys got better beef with uh, Harold and Tucker and uh, different people like Melton, different people on your team all of a sudden. So this is going to be an interesting battle. And I've seen you guys cut a lot of your young players this week, like Bassey and Isaiah Joe. That's interesting to me. But you did double down on Paul Reed, which is really, really smart. Sixers, I have a lot of respect for you all this year. I'm not – I'm like, listen, this is a poisonous snake, and we need to handle them with care. 
because they're going to be dangerous. They're going to be very, very dangerous with Maxi on the rise, as usual, of Harden being a good citizen and Joel Embiid being Joel Embiid. We have to really take them seriously. And I do want to see y'all beat the Celtics on opening night. I really, really do. Uh, cool cat saying empty seats are due to uh, how slow the gate system is. Too many times they open the gates uh, an hour before it's start time and can't process the long lines on time. It's part of my frustration. All right, cool cat. Well, I want to teach you something about the Air Canada Center slash Scotia Bank that I taught Sue on Sunday. That if you guys are coming to the game, don't try and go in through the entrance from the Union Station. Don't try and go through the entrance between the hockey uh, hockey statues and the star cross columns. Don't go through those entrances. Go to the other side of the building where Bay Street is, and you'll find there's no line. There is absolutely no line at that Bay Street entrance, at that gate. We did this the other day on Sunday. We stood and we saw people lined up down the street uh, in Jurassic Park, lined up down the way uh, where the entrance from the subway is. But you go outside and go to the east side of the building, the very center of the east side of the building. That gate is always almost no line. You can go right in. There was no line when Sue and I went around there, even though there was a line almost all the way down Jurassic Park on the other side of the building. Nobody thinks of this. So there's a little tip of the trade. If you ever come to the game and you're a little uh, behind or you want to just not have to stand in line to get into the building, go to that gate. You will get in like within five minutes. Trust me. It's a given because nobody thinks to go there. Nobody lines up at that side of the building. So there's a little tip from the Raptor Freak to you guys about the Scotiabank Arena. Go to the east side of the building to enter the building. You'll get in very quickly. Uh, Monique saying we play the Cavs on uh, opening day on Wednesday. They play the Celtics on Tuesday, opening day uh, the day before us. So that'll be fun. A random gamer saying, oh, man, gee, I can't wait for the Sixers versus Raptors. It's going to be a fun time. Yeah, you guys are going to get both your games in Toronto out of the way, like right away. We need to make sure we beat you guys in those two games because we need you guys to be a little bit still trying to figure out your new pieces and how they meld together with your existing guys from last year. Uh, we need you to have a little bit of a transition period by the time you come to Toronto and we play two games in a row against you because we'd like to beat you before you have all your shit figured out is like what I'm thinking. I'm hoping for is that we kind of have our shit all figured out in some ways. Maybe you guys haven't totally meshed in uh, people like Montrez Harrell and PJ Tucker exactly all together and stuff like that. A uh, fun guy saying Coloco changed complexion of game every time he did this in college too. Not a coincidence. This is who he is. He will be a big for our franchise. He will be a huge addition. And I'm so happy about, him being drafted to us. He was a perfect draft pick. And he's looking more and more like it as time goes on. Um, all right, let me see. I just jumped again. Uh, logical saying, random gamer, rank Sixers creators. I think it's a uh, run it back, RB, then Broads. I don't know any of the Sixers guys. I'm not going to talk about this. Uh, random saying, Mo, y'all are going to whoop the Cavs. I'm tired of the hype over there. Okay, this is cool. We're hearing from Sixers fan that he thinks that the Cavs are overrated and they're getting way overhyped also. I agree with this. Donovan Mitchell shows up and everybody's like, ooh, they're this, this, and this. Well, let's see. I want to beat their ass so bad on Wednesday. Ooh, I want to beat the Cavs' ass so bad. Ooh, I do, I do, I do, I do, I do. Um, all right, let's see. Um, yeah, that's about right. Uh, Philly Mike. Yeah, I don't know who these people are. I don't want to talk about other people's content, especially Philly's content. You know, I don't mind you talking about your content, Raptors fanatic, but seriously, this chat is for basketball stuff. It's not about talking about YouTube channels and people's different stuff like that. You can push your stuff a little bit. But the other day, you were kind of talking too much, taking over the chat, talking about the, how much you should have time on your chat. So we don't want to do that here. We want to talk about the Raptors and the team and the game and stuff like that. Not necessarily about content makers, especially Philly content makers. I don't give a shit about them. Random gamer knows them. That's fine. Stuff like that. Um, let's see. Uh, fun guy saying even romp romp my guy. All right, <laughs> what is that? Uh, fun guy saying so. And B got it right when he said year seventy six. Maybe, maybe. All right, let's see. Uh, Tom Duke saying we are basketball and general freaks. I like that. We are kind of all basketball freaks. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna skip all the stuff about Philly content. I don't give a shit about that. Uh, Nameless saying, man, we had Celtics offense in the Boston Crab last night. Great game by Nurse. Two pulled. Uh, he pulled at the right strings. I like that that ref, wrestling reference by Nameless. He said, we have him in the Boston Crab, like Rick Martell would have somebody in the Boston Crab. Yeah, 
Yeah, I agree with that. We kind of had them locked up and tied up pretty good. Uh, fun guy saying, all right, my lovely freaks, going to drive, get a PS5 on the company of my beautiful Mary Jane. Yes, sir. You Man, you're living the life. Fun guy, he's feeling good after an overtime win over the Celtics, and he's going to buy a PS5, and he's got his friend Mary Jane with him. That sounds like a perfect Saturday to me, fun guy. You go and live your life. Much respect. Much respect. Laughing my ass off too, logical. Hilarious. Yeah, where are you finding a PS5? I'm sure he's got some somewhere or something like that. Um, let's see. Nameless JB PS4 Pro at the moment. Wait, all right, yeah. Uh, we're getting off topic too much. Uh, Sirius radio guy, Justin T has Nick nurse winning coach of the year. Oh, that's good. He should get more consideration. He got disrespected by the GM poll. I thought that he should have been in consideration. He's the same kind of guy like Steve Kerr and Eric Spolstra. He should be in the same tier as far as considered uh, how good they are as coaches. You know, has Spolstra even won a championship as a coach? I think he did. Like, he did, didn't he? Or did Pat Riley get all those Miami championships? I'm not sure. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, you, you're still talking about PlayStation stuff. Let me see. Uh, all right. Uh, Monique is saying, remember, reading that about Brogdon, we don't need you. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, what the fuck? Okay, thanks for the information and telling us, oh, you had a choice between the Raptors and the Celtics. Yeah, we don't really care. <laughs> it's like, fine. I mean, this is a weird slight. And maybe some uh, Celtics fans will be like, ooh, and all this kind of stuff. But I mean, honestly, what he said is right in some ways. But it's also kind of like, you know, who cares? Why do you even have to mention us? You know, you're going to make things, uh, you know, people are like, well, Raptor fan, don't overreact. Don't start booing him. Well, why not? We're allowed to. He fucking slighted us. Don't talk shit about us. Don't put our name in your mouth if you're going to say something like that. You, you expect Goran Dragic treatment. You're going to do that. And other fans are like, oh, no, don't boo him for that. Fuck you. We can boo him for that if we want to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ansem Joseph saying Brogdon is not a miss. I know. I know, Ansem, so much. Good to see you, Raptor Freak, Ansem Joseph. Uh, good to see you again. Yeah, it's like, thank you. Thank you for choosing Boston. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for making them worse so they're easier to beat. Because you are kind of like part of Derek White, and you are kind of like both kind of easy to beat in some ways and stuff like that. Okay, let's see. Okay, he's naming games now. I don't know what's up. Uh, logical saying a uh, Philly fan on documentary doc for not playing Paul Reed more. <clears throat> He's great. Like, but it is interesting that they cut Bassey and Joe and stuff like that. They're going with uh, Paul Reed though. He's a good one. He's a good one. I like him a lot and stuff like that. They'll probably pay him, play him more this season as it goes. But then again, they have more depth at power forward. They may not need him as much. They played him a lot last year, partly because they just needed more size. But now that they have the size, they may not play Reed as much. I don't know. We'll have to see. Sixers Sixers have options. That's the thing. They don't just have like a – what's his name? Uh, uh, Nyang and like Korkmus and stuff like that. Those were like their bench guys, and they're not big. They have no muscle. Now they got muscle. That's a problem. That is a problem. Uh, Nameless is saying, do you think Brogdon regrets joining Boston rather than T.O.? Probably not. He's, he's an idiot. He probably won't realize it. I don't know. I don't care. He's, he's like he's a non-story to me in some ways. Uh, he will be an all-star by break for sure. Who are you talking about, Tom? Malcolm Brogdon? <laughs> uh, uh, it's all good, Fanatic. It's all good. We would just like to stay on topic. Sometimes you you take us in weird directions with some of your questions and comments and stuff like that. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to drive around them in the future and stuff like that. It's all good. It's all good. I know you're passionate about a lot of stuff. I don't know anything about the PlayStation stuff, so I can't really like log in, uh, lock in on that and talk about it with you guys. All right. We're almost at three hours. I do have to go because it's my father's 77th birthday. Happy birthday to you, dad. I feel so lucky and grateful that I get to be around my dad. The rule one person that can say I'm his son is my dad. And I'm really, really happy that he's in Canada right now because they don't live in Canada most of the year. And I get to spend a birthday with him. This may be the first time I've spent a birthday with him in like a decade, guys. I'm not lying, seriously, because I'm not usually around him on his birthday. So I do want to go see my dad right now. He's going to be here in like the next 20 minutes. So I do have to wrap up the marathon. <laughs> and I should probably eat something before he gets here. So, um, <clears throat> all right. No, I meant Brockton would regret not being a Raptor come All-Star break. Oh, okay. That's what you mean. 
well, he might regret it after last night already. And th I appreciate that. Uh, happy birthday wish to my dad and stuff like that. Race mode daily. Good to see you, race mode. Uh, let's go. Happy birthday, Papa Dukes. Yes, yes. I'm so happy. He's retired now. And, you know, I get to spend a lot more time with him now that he can travel more often. He's not teaching the school like he would be teaching semester right now at FAMU if he was still teaching. And that's part of the reason why I never saw him on his birthday. He's a, he's he's a, he's a retired now, so I can actually hang out with him. All right, good stream. Thank you guys. W stream, logical Raptors fanatic. W stream, Tom Duke. W stream, Scotty Barnes. W stream, Nardo. W stream, Lloyd. W stream, John French. W stream, Monique. W stream, random gamer, race mode. Uh, everybody who came in today and checked in and said something today. W Peter Saborin. <laughs> yes. Yes, I appreciate all y'all. Please subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. It helps me the best. If you want to share my content too, also, that's great. What a great game last night. Such a fantastic overtime win over the Celtics. We got what we wanted. We have a winning record in the preseason, and that's fantastic. Can't wait for Wednesday. It cannot come soon enough, but we will be back in the regular season action that really, really matters. Go Sixers, beat the Celtics on Tuesday, and go Raptors. Let's beat the Cavs on Wednesday. All right, tomorrow, ref report. So tune in tomorrow. I'm going to be going deep dive on the referees in the NBA and talking about who's good for the Raptors and who isn't. And there's certain ones. You, Some of the people that are on the list that are bad for us, you know who they are. They actually really are bad for us. We are not wrong. <laughs> and you know who those names are. We'll talk about them tomorrow, 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yes, fire, fire. Yes, happy birthday, Papa Dupes from uh. Uh, CC, I'm going to definitely say that. And Isaac Campbell, W to my dad. I'm going to tell all the love from you guys. Actually, he might be hearing you guys right now, actually, because he's probably listening on his way down. He's driving here and he's probably listening to us and he's probably hearing all you guys saying happy birthday to him. And I, that's awesome. That's really special. Uh, Jeff Downton's grandma passed away this week. Oh, I hate to hear that. Hate to hear that. All right, guys. WWW. Let's go. Rappers. <laughs>